Hey, welcome back to Metch Ball Grid. My name is Andre. Hopefully you're doing well. It's a Thursday night. It is September 29th. My older brother's birthday. What a guy. Happy birthday, uh, my older brother. Uh, hopefully you're all doing well. Just off the top, there's going to be no stream next week. In fact, there's going to be a bigger, maybe a better stream. That's right. I almost said Nisei. I did it. I almost said Nisei. Welcome to that world where I ruin every video take I do where I accidentally say Project Nisei when I meant to say Null Signal Games. How's everyone doing? Welcome. It's okay. I do it too. <laughs> it's been eating through my, my hard drive of all the times I have to be like, ah, crap. I'll get it. I'll do it again. It's going to get easier. I have no doubt. We're all going to mess it up. I'm going to get kicked off the world stream. Hey, how you doing, uh, Dan? Uh, yo, Julianne, please tell us which corp to play at Worlds. Easy, we're gonna get there. In fact, that's what we're doing the stream. I don't know how much gameplay we're gonna do. We're gonna start with the deck list of the week. It's good. Uh, I know you've played it a fair bit. And then from then, we'll see how we go. I wanna crunch, there's a lot of news. I think that's obvious. And then we're gonna crunch through the meta and make some predictions. Uh, Worlds, mind you, is next week. That's cool. Hey, Izzy, how's it going? Um, it's in a week. I gotta build only one deck, uh, two decks. I know a lot of people actually have a lot more deck building to do where they want to build for like the, the crown of lasers, crown of servers, the team tournament, whatever it's called, uh, and then standard and then startup. And then you want to play some eternal. And that's a lot of deck building. In fact, in terms of deck building, I just did my binders yesterday. I just picked up my midnight sun cards and it's a really wild story because I had to pick up my midnight sun cards from a food store like an organic um, bulk food store. It was actually a really fantastic experience. Shout out to uh, a person I met who I haven't had the pleasure to meet yet, but his his wife was there. He stepped out at the moment and she's getting into Netrunner. I'm hoping hoping you're having a good time with it. Laser break of sound waves. It's something like that. I don't know. I'm, I'm glad they took the king out of it. I'll be honest. That was a great change, but uh, here we are. Hey, Frisbee, how's it going? Jake, how you doing? Andre, please convince everyone that they should be playing Con at Worlds. We had a really unfortunate con incident just the other day uh, where we played con <laughs> and it was bad and it was not good. I do think con is probably a bit better than we showed off because we did con, but we also did cons bird breakers, which like you don't have to do that. You shouldn't do that. But don't play con, I don't think. No, we didn't. That's the thing is like we technically didn't. And then I went to build a thumbnail and I'm like, I don't know how to advertise this stream. Right. I'm going to put con up there because people might click on that. Uh, and then the whole jig was up, right? Like I had to, I, I crumbled inwards on my fundamentals. It was really, really bad. I'm stressing out about worlds, so much to do in the next week. Okay, so obviously the folks at, at Null Signal Games have a lot of stuff to do. I have a smaller subset of stuff to do and I'm stressed out. I have a list of things I have to do. I've been like behind on emails and messages, getting that all in line. And then I found out like, I don't know what to wear to worlds. <laughs> and like, this is a genuine issue because I'm gonna be casting. And I think my, my co-caster is like putting on a blazer and doing something nice. Uh, and I don't know, like I didn't want to do that. And now I feel like I have to. So now I need to go, for, I'm, I don't know. I don't own a blazer. Maybe I'll find some nice shirts and I'll just button up and I'll look cute. I don't even know if you're gonna see me. Ah, uh, whole class. I don't know. I don't like the whole like the whole idea that commentators are like wearing suits and jackets and this is like a professional sports and like classical professional sports. I think we got past this in like half of esports, but not all of esports. No, uh, no, no shots fired at pants. You want to wear a suit? Wear a suit. It's funny. Um, but like, I don't know what to do. I'm you watch me on the stream. I'm th this is nice. I'm no normally in a t shirt. Ah. Uh. That's a whole other thing I forgot I need to think about. Izzy, have you not planned out all your outfits? Uh, I, I'm going to wear slacks. I'm definitely going to wear slacks, though. It's going to be pretty good. Is this a new haircut? Butt poop. It is. Thank you. I got my haircut today. Uh, cool that you noticed, I reckon. How are you doing? If everyone plays con, there's bound to be at least one good to con deck there. I, so, I, mean, I don't even know if that's the case. If everyone plays con, there will be a best con deck. I think that's the most we can say. There will be a lot of worst con decks. <laughs> Oh no. I'm 100% sure it never got played. Con? Blazer and t-shirt is a classic esports attire. I even think blazer and t-shirt is like the dated esports attire. Do you know who like dresses good? Uh, Overwatch League circa 2019? How, when's the Overwatch League been a thing last? Overwatch League commentators dress. Not dress. Clothing. Cl dress is going to be a bit more focused. Looking sharp. Thank you. Like some of these are just like, you know, handsome folks in shirts generally like the female staff they dress really really well um like that's a killer outfit i can't pull that off 
uh, despite if I try. But like a lot of times, you know, it's a respectable look. But like, I, I don't want to look like, like these are, it's fine. That guy has some color and stuff. It's, it's a plaid pattern. That's kind of fun. But like, I don't want to look like golf commentators. I'm imagining golf commentators. Oh no, golf, com yeah, like this. This is no good. This seems like you need a, a key to the yacht club to get involved. Um, this guy shows up though. That's cool, I guess. Anyways, I don't know. I'm worried about it. I'll figure it out. Somehow my notifications were like, yo, Ixern, how's it going? Cosplay is Max and day job? Someone suggested that I cosplay the image of me from the Mad Zellinger art and like, I need a really sharp blue vest from the future. I don't even know what Max is. I have one cosplay piece. I've showed this probably a couple times on stream. Ow. And this is pretty dated. I still have this. I was an intern at Gagarin Deep Space. I made a whole bunch of these for a team tournament locally. I made a NBN press pass and an H like an HB scientist thing. The thing is like, this is gonna sell it. No one's gonna, it's not gonna get anywhere. I don't even know if you're gonna see us on stream. Yo, Brandon, it's the king. We got your deck list to play. Also, huge congratulations. Um, Do you wanna let us know what the rest of the road trip is looking like? Are you making it to UK nationals? Is it, it's a whole full tour, man. You're killing it so far. Well, really well done. I wanted to ask you a bit more about how your events went. You can absolutely pull it off. Uh, I appreciate it. I don't even know where to buy that. You always look great. Ah, oh, thank you. I like the look with the cap. I feel like we've gone past that. That badge rules. Thank you. It was really fun to make. Um, I put way more effort into it than I should have. It looks like it, a lot of dust now apparently got the laminate. So it kind of looks bad, but it was a fun thing to do at the time. I've told this anecdote maybe once too many on the stream, but one time uh, we were wearing the team tournament thing. So my friend has his like HB badge that said he worked for... I forget what branch of HB. And then he wore it. He didn't take it off. And he went to go to the Depener, which is like a corner store, like a convenience store to go get, you know, a drink or something mid rounds. And somebody asked him where he worked. He's like, wow, that looks really official. And it was uh, pretty funny. Okay. Anywho, this is where we are. Uh, this is Brandon's list. The name is hilarious controlling the bladder because this is a controlling the message asset list. Uh, and it's more of a prison type list than it is anything else. Like it, it's, it's it's a prison list. We've seen controlling the message. This was like a big question mark competitively at what's gonna happen with controlling the message. Controlling message, mind you, is like the most, one of the most consistently competitive archetypes. It's one world, I wanna say twice, but it's almost always one world just about every year, except this year there's a big, again, question mark because it lost all the busted assets from the Mumbad cycle. So people didn't know what to do with it. And what this version is, it's basically the shell of the Reality Plus list. So you're seeing as few agendas as you can while also we're playing um, Archive Memories 3X, mind you. This is no, no longer you can do this. The ban list has changed. You're running those market forces, the self-growth program, a single all-seeing guy. And then on top of that, you're playing three Drago. Drago and CTM is pretty mean because when you trash it, you're generally going to get tagged on top of it. And this list also is running 3x bladder word, which I don't understand. I'm, I think it makes the name good. Thanks so much. I haven't booked it officially yet, but there's still plans to go to UK Nationals. Yo, Brandon, when is it? Dungeons and Dragos is, I think, the name that I've seen this list come up before. I know Lopera just recently won uh, a circuit opener in uh, in Ottawa playing this list, and people are dropping the influence on archive memories on a couple things. I've heard some people playing two copies of Restore. I think that's fascinating. Uh, some people are just playing Boom to close out the game a bit faster. I think that's reasonable as well. And then you probably want to play the third hardening news. I think that's what Lopera did. And the one thing that I want to try, because I feel like this card is underappreciated. We were just talking about this. Maybe I'm spoiling hot tech. But that's the point, right? My internet's hemorrhaging packets tonight. Going to be tough to watch. Raketha, I'm so sorry. I'll talk really much slower. So even with packet loss, you might be able. Why are thumbnails so hard? Ixaran, are you making some stuff? Thumbnails are really hard. And they're really important, unfortunately. Your thumbnail is like the most important thing that you click on it. And thumbnail quality is something, if you look on my channel, ranges. There's a clear era where my computer screen was undersaturated and you can tell all my thumbnails are hard to look at because they're oversaturated. Um, I've kind of got into a niche and a groove. I'm templating most of my thumbnails. Silly face, two cards, that gets it done. But it's way more work than you think it is. Just about everything to do with uh, a video publication is a bit more work than you think it's going to be. Today I learned this is a card. This is a good card. 
this is a surprisingly okay on tempo card. Every uh, corporation, if I'm not mistaken, got a reprisal card in the guitar cycle that basically is turned on. I think every, maybe Wayland didn't. No, Wayland got the baseball bat. Of course they did. Um, and if the runner trashes something, which they are going to have to do, they can either take two tags or you point a card and that card goes to the top of the deck. So modernly, what are your good targets? Boat. If Boat goes to the top of the deck, that's a draw and eight credits to come down. That's a huge economic swing in the matchup. Uh, on top of that, they can't take two tags if you're playing a boom deck. They, they just can't, let alone self program and, and the free market uh, market forces. Like, that's it's quite difficult. And on top of that, this lets you purge Amakua on tempo. Like, that's kind of cool. You point at Amakua, two tags or Amakua is gone. And, like, they can't take the two tags. Uh, yeah, so they really can't. Uh, I ran into a startup version of this and it was miserable. Litterbug, how's it going? Um, yeah, you can play this in startup, but the big difference, I've tried playing these sort of prison decks in startup and I had zero to no success because the tag punishment just isn't there. The best thing you can do is retribution people, and that is really strong if they're playing, like, of course, boat. That's still meaningful, but you still see people getting boats trashed in the competitive scene last month and that wasn't an issue. I think the economy is a bit tighter now, so that might be. But that was it. And like if you're playing against Anarch that has enough simul chips and Shaper that has all the simul chips, it's just criminal that it deals with. I don't know how you meant to close a game out with tags in, in startup. I can't figure it out. Brandon says Bladderword is awesome. Man, there's so many people there on like on Team Bladderword, and I don't understand why. It's okay. It's fine. How often do you want to be on low credits? You have two hard-hitting newses. I don't get it. There's probably some good card that you can use for thumbnail faces. <laughs> like just replace me with them. Oh, just prepare a bunch of thumbnail faces. Yes, you can just prepare them. I pre-can all my reactions. Yeah, don't, excuse me. Hey, Kat, how's it going? Hey, Andre, how chat is everyone? I'm doing well. Are you doing well? I know all your art card arts are in. I know there's going to be some cool merch in like a week. How did your uh, CEO go? Also, huge shout outs. I pointed this to Kat earlier this morning, but uh, shut up and sit down. They've been doing like these previews for uh, different things. Um, for attached to shucks, which their expo is like this weekend, I think. Hopefully, if you're going there, you're having fun. And they they shouted out Cat's nice deep dive art, which is really cute. It makes the runner have to interact with you early, which is good for you, or they lose cards. I just feel like I'm glad to interact with CTM if they're on less than three credits. Like if they're on less than three three credits, I'm interacting, right? So I guess we're gonna see in practice real soon. It's the yellow baseball bat. It's like way worse than baseball bat, but actually maybe not. I thought we had no stream this evening. Yay, we have a stream. Such a How's it going? Welcome to stream. We're going to have no stream next week. And I just want to say this at the top because I've got a lot of questions about it. And Nisei will address this officially, but I was told that I can address this officially on behalf of Nisei unofficially. Address. Officially. So first thing is that Worlds will be streamed. And we're going to talk about this in the news section after we play this. But Nisei has changed their name. While Nisei.net still gets you there, Nisei's new name is now Null Signal, Null Signal Games. So the website is technically, if you see it really tiny at the top, you're probably not going to. It's nullsignal.games. Two words all in one. So that means their Twitch channel has been migrated. It's twitch.tv slash null signal netrunner. It's not what you think it is. Yeah, it's null signal netrunner. Somebody owns null signal. I don't know if they own null signal games. So they've been migrated here. Oh, cool. This is recursive. Um, but they will be streaming. And on Thursday, they should be streaming the servers team tournament. Oh, sorry, on Friday, excuse me, on Friday, the streams will begin. And then on Saturday, it's the standard day one that will be streamed. And then Sunday, they will be streaming, of course, the top cut and the finals and the championship for the standard format. That's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There will be things streamed every day. The thing also is like the if you see at the schedule, we'll look at that. The standard tournament should end around five o'clock Eastern on uh, Sunday. Again, that's what the schedule says. It can easily go late, maybe even early, usually late. And then once that is done, they will probably uh, continue to stream on and you will see startup footage because the startup finals, the startup world championship finals will end around 8 p.m. So like three, four four hours later from that. So while standard is over, it's not the end of the show. If you want to see startup and you won't be able to see startup Swiss rounds, you'll just see the top, top tables doing it out to get the, the final world championship title. So the startup thing will also be streamed, but all this stuff link obviously in the description is now twitch.tv slash null signal uh, games. There's links on the old Nisei website called null signal. Wizard face on boom would make a good thumbnail place. Yeah, it was. Benny was an esports bar. What did you end up bringing Kat? How'd it go? Otherwise, that's really cool. Navi Mumbai Grid was fantastic and Mopus, but sadly it's gone now. Hey, Dane. Just like the card? Because this card is a tech card. It's pretty good. It would actually work. People played this for a while. When Boomerang was like, a, it's, it's max degeneracy. One more week until you know what? Orbital, how's it going? I don't know what I said. Did you say count two? Three? Four? I said it there because it made sense. Um, Look, whatever. I'm, I'm saying it normally. 
Good. How's it going, Cephalopod? Now, Single Games is a bit of a mouthful. Hey, firstly, I love Pi because it's awesome. Welcome to the stream. It is. We'll talk about it when we go to the name change. Obviously, like when you change any name, no one's like, ah, oh, I like the new name better than the old one. Of course you're not. I've, I've said the word Nisei for like years now. It's going to take some time. I, I think it's harder. Like, I don't know what to do to say, like, do we because I say the word Nisei Netrunner a lot of times to refer to like modern startup esque Netrunner or the continuation of standard Netrunner, eternal Netrunner. And I don't know what don't know what I'm going to say, like null signal Netrunner. That's a bit of a mouthful. We'll figure out something. I've seen people say NSG for the, you know, the acronym. We'll, we'll get over it. We'll figure out something just say nsg yeah nsg is still hard to say i'll be honest <laughs> it's still difficult redzuka how's it going i like the new name I, I don't mind the new name i think i like the new name less when it came out and now it's been a couple days i've recorded myself saying it a fair bit it's more normalized yeah i'm fine with it of course no one's gonna like the new name better than the old name you've got so used to the old name i'm already following that channel yeah you probably are already following it if you're following the the old nisei channel now I know what decks I'm not bringing. What did you end up bringing, Cad? Because people would love to know that. Remember discovering the Navi Mumbai Grid stuffs turning wheel? Oh yeah, I guess it does. It stuffs a lot of stuff because it's a, it's a paid ability. For what it's worth, I don't know if this is a paid ability window. It's not. The twinning is not a paid ability because you don't actually, it just says, it's not a paid ability. It's called a reaction ability. I've been looking at stuff. Null Runner, Null Sig, Ginevra, how's it going? Yeah, I've heard Null Runner. It's confusing. Null is a card in the game and is a runner. I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure out something. Next runner. Next runner is confusing. NSG is similar to FFG. Yeah. How's it going, Kror? It's a, it's definitely similar. NSG Netrunner. Yeah, it'll be fine. No single games is so much better. Makes me think at the drive-in. The station's not operational. I don't know if I know what that is. Cactus, how's it going? Welcome. Um. All right. We're just going to dive in. We're going to play this. I made some changes to the list. So we talked about what changes you can make to the list. I think there's a couple options. I think some people are playing boom. I'm playing two copies of restore, which is probably wrong, but restore is the closest thing you have to uh, archive memories, but it's only for installable cards. Mind you, you can actually restore agendas and remove agendas from the game, which is a niche clause. You actually can get huge value from. Um, from my friends who've been testing this locally, they basically found that playing controlling the message, especially the prison version, is, is a bit awkward right now. Sometimes the games go long, but more importantly, I feel like a lot of people are actually teching for this. Because again, front page of Netrunner, you're going to see it on, on jateki.net. Uh, people are prepared for the matchup. And it's one of the matchups where like actual uh, tech cards uh, has a huge impact on things. So we'll see what we can do. You were on CTM and Woo. CTM was fine. A terrible Woo pilot. Oh, interesting. I take a meta breaker, I guess. All right, I've already imported this. I made my own changes. We'll see what they are in real time. I think this is a ploy to bring Null up to tier one runner with card support. <laughs> He's gonna need a lot of card support, let me tell you. How's it going, by the way, Muppeteers? It's a band and an album. I don't know if I know that one. Or, all right, let's see if we can summon Whiteblade. Uh, how many people have like their deck sorted out? And I think there's a lot of people that are going to do it last minute. Mind you, deck submissions are basically like the the opening hour of the event. So you don't really have to lock anything in. Um, I think there's also some nationals this weekend. So if you want to see stuff in the modern format, uh, whatever is doing good, you have a weekend to look at like always be running results. Where's White Bait to dunk on us? <laughs> he's, he's lurking. He's waiting. All we need is the Anarch only pack. Easy. Yo, because I did my rotation binder, like, no, seeing these, like, deluxes that are, you know, a bit more focused, I'd be interested to see if Nisei or, shit, Null Signal ever does that. This isn't White Blade? No, 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 this is Jester. Opening hand, we got the Bladder Word. Uh, otherwise, it's not very good. I got a mulligan that. They're playing Freedom. Freedom, I think, is a really good thing to consider bringing to Worlds. I've heard Freedom Boat, Endurance Freedom is really good, but this is a close to a nightmare matchup. Uh, we played against 55 card Freedom a fair bit whenever we play Acid decks, and Freedom is just a solid ability. It's really good against controlling the message. It's really good, and you can just play a couple more cards to make it even better into Sports Metal. It's really good into the Obelisks that are playing with one cost, two cost, zero cost. Uh, I think there's a big chance that Freedom is one of the big things that you should be looking at. Null support would be called Signal Games, and <laughs> Visa OB, they actually banned it even though it's new. Sorry, we had to ban this one really fast. All right, well, at least we have a controlling the message thing. I'm just going to put everything on the table. Wait, what did I put on the table? Degree? That was, don't do that. Whoops. I'm just going to fix it with my hand. 
Don't do what I did. And box up my extra cards. I sleeped on mine today. Oh, your whole decks are sleeved up. I just did my binders. Tajin, I'm still hoping a Shaper wins Worlds 2022. I think there's a big chance they can. Shaper decks seem good right now. And also, like, going into a relatively unknown meta, I think Shapers are has some huge strengths. The fact that they can... Uh, yep. The fact that they can... Um, Generally play a lot of like uh, tools, you know, a lot of reactionary tools that they can pull from their deck and shaper ways. I think that's pretty good. Obviously, we've seen shaper been good this last month. The Rezeki and Patap changes do matter, but you do see like Apoclat decks like those SBL decks are published and they're doing very good. Now, if they run last click here, oh, they found Rashida. It doesn't matter, really. They would have trashed any of these, but they might take a tag and one single tag doesn't matter too much. Restore is so underplayed in HB. Half of Friends in High Places is still pretty strong. Not a good archives replacement outside of HB. Yeah, the only real time that you saw Restore commonly uh, was for MC Austerity. But there wasn't that many assets that were that important to, like, tempo back. They just paid four for that. I think we're okay. I'm going to res both of these just so that we can do a net damage. And then we fast advance in the Azyev. Uh We'll do Bladder Word first for safety. But we can win. We hit a Steel Skins Karring. Brandon, we need to talk about this Bladder Word. We, we need to talk about it. Uh, I'm going to ice that one up for sure. The question is what we do with the rest of the turn. We can draw once. Yeah, I think we're just going to ice that one up and uh, click for credit. Oh, click for credit's kind of bad. I guess if we res this, we can also use the Nasex trigger when we get the money off the bladder to put the bladder word on the Nasex to like kind of duck under it. We'll see. I can't stand putting stuff in and out of binders. I just leave every card the same way and separate them by faction by type. Tinai, how's it going? I, I am not a person who... um who sleeves their cards unless they're in decks, but I really enjoy binders. I know a lot of people put them in boxes, but I like the visual the visual nature of binders. And unfortunately, the way that I'm now organizing my cards, uh, now that cards are coming out a bit more uh, consistently is the plan, it does get a fair bit more difficult. Um, there's a, a bit more like a rearranging. So I'm going to do this. So I want to see, this gives us a credit. So we can do this. Uh, I have to Nasex manually. So I'm going to put two credits on here when I get the credit from this. So we'll do Bladder Word first. So that actually does do a damage and hits a Friday chip. Bladder Word is the best word. And then we get uh, the credits on Nasex. Now the issue is like if we want to pop the Nasex, like this is technically a click for four credits, which is something we've already paid money for it. But this is the idea. And now with the second Bladder Word, they actually have to do something. Uh, the question is whether we can duck our money or not. I don't think we can. I don't, I want to draw once because I don't want to click for credit. Obviously, we can't res this, but it might look like we can. I said, yeah. I use a long BCW box currently. I think it's a good way to do it. I just like looking at the stuff I don't like to go through. Excited for TSK Investigator Pack tomorrow? Dane, I am so stressed out about this for like ridiculous reasons. Because my store is really good and I love my store, but recently my store has been getting certain FFG products like a month late. And the the new Arkham thing is coming out tomorrow. And I have a I understand that because I pre-ordered it and I'm loyal to my store, there's a small chance that I'm not gonna see them anytime soon. And that feels bad. Wow. Yeah. Taskmaster's back. Yeah, I heard it's today. I haven't checked it out yet. All right. Um, yeah, I, I know it's uh, I know it's today. I, I haven't seen it. We've been getting into only connect, which has been quite good. OK, now we'll do bladder wart for one damage. All right. Uh, then we'll do bladder wart. OK, all right. Do we have to crack this for 300 credits? I kind of want to not do that uh, because that would put us out of the ladder war territory. Again, we are forcing interaction. I love how stuff looks in binders, but it makes it hard to build decks, lots of flipping pages and stuff. I do all my deck building online and then I just pull it from the binder, but you're totally not wrong. They're going to probably trash next turn. Do we want to crack this? Like the chance, the fact that I don't want to crack this for uh, thinking for like ridiculous credits, like this is a cl cr crack for eight credits and I don't want to do it. We'll draw once. We can't afford to ice up everything, but we will. They're so poor. Yeah, but eventually with the consume, they get somewhere. They have to draw twice because they can't deal with all of this. And we can only res one of these cards and they know if they do. Got to slow down, Andre. Can't break your record two game stream from last week. <laughs> I've heard that this game can go long. And this is the idea of what Bladder Word is cool. All right. They're actually running this one, which I'm, uh, you know, fine about, I guess, technically. Yes. I think you often only crack Nasdaq to HHN in this deck. I, I would imagine it. Like, I don't think we mind paying credits into this nonsense. 
Here they trash it for free. They get a consume counter, but there's still a trace four. And that means we'll probably get the AR in hands. I don't know. Hey, Meowdy Wayne, how's it going? Yeah, okay, we don't need to boost this. In theory, we could boost this to duck, actually. No, we should boost this to duck. So we need to keep at least two credits. So we'll go to three. We'll make the seven. So then we'll be at two credits, which is enough to res the white space. That's all we need to do. Interaction is runner drawing cards. I know, but like that's something. That means like they're, they, they still have to do something. They can't just click four. Um, and these sort of lists are actually th like acid based lists for obvious reasons are a bit more interesting now with that pad tap, right? Not that they weren't particularly good. Like Yusuf, this is good. This is fine. And I'm going to advance this now. Unfortunately, we can't res anything. But now if they go to, to trash our stuff, like it's a nightmare. Me here sitting, we don't need to boost this, screaming at my screen. I know, I got there, I got there, I got there, I got there. I was thinking it through. I was like, yeah, we need to figure out a way to duck. Frank, how's it going, man? Thinking, of course. Market forces is not bad, only one tag if the runner's poor. Yeah, I, we'd consider market forces on a single tag. They've played a lot of money into our tags yet, and this is the, still the point where like they could trash these, but they understand now it's two tags, and they have to draw twice if they're not doing that. I missed something. Love getting extra use out of another game box. I used to my terminal directive box, but I have to make new dividers. I still have my terminal directive box. I think it was a comedy of how big it is. Liberated counts gets lost to zero. Zero is a nice card. It allows them to like fly through their deck while still uh, like it allows them to do card draw. So unfortunately, we're credit short here. So this is where we can actually consider restoring and play like uh, a man in the moon kind of op deck. This is two tanks. Which again, we can return if they don't pop their consume to hand. Uh, the order here, not that important. Do we boost this? Uh, probably not. They probably should trash and flow tags for turning. It's hard with market forces and self growth. Like it's difficult, but yeah, maybe they can. Like they could, um, you know, recover. Yo, Pat, when's it start? Is it start tomorrow? Howdy from Squamish. How's your, your travels? Figuring out the list online is how I do it too, and then you have to pull everything out of binders. It's so convenient to have everything sleeved and ready to go. Yeah, the thing is, like, I use bespoke sleeves, like, colored sleeves, so I don't have everything, like, yeah, mass sleeve. This is where everything comes down crashing. But this is where we do market forces, self-growth program, restore. Oh, disgusting. Hi, could I please uh, see all of your money? Hi, would I like to return to sender your economy? I think it's the, uh, oof. I, I think we return the Paladin, right? We don't return this. Well, we could. We don't return the Yusuf. It's too cheap. I think we return the Paladin. It's going to have three credits next turn. And we just go ahead and restore a Bladder Wart into server three. Fortunately, we have too many credits. I'll be shocked at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Still see you real soon at running. That's really exciting. Pat, go get me some overclocks. Thank you. We still have two tags, dirty laundry. Again, they can steal our degree mill, one and three. Oh, degree mill, okay, they found it. I don't know if they have to steal it here. Hope you're doing well, Cole, I am. How are you doing? Oh, they took it. <laughs> They're trying to get out of the prison. Okay, well that kind of changes the game a bit, doesn't it? Okay, thinking, the question is, Yo, Cody, how's it going, man? I sent you a message on Patreon. I found out really quickly the deck list I was trying to force does not work because of ruling interactions. Um, okay, so here we can restore for the bladder word, which is like the prison we want it to be. We can obviously hard hitting news. The question is whether we want to ice up R&D. Uh, oh, we removed the other bladder word from the game. Oh, actually getting hard punished, getting totally wrecked for our restore. Um, the Asa deck looks was good. Yo, we'll talk about that later. I'm glad you like it. Um, we need to talk about startup and standard because it's kind of, kind of cool. I think we're just going to ice R&D hard hitting news. Yeah, losing a bladder word actually was meaningful with the restore. I thought we we're going to restore a second one, but this re removes all other copies that are in archives from the game. So again, a bit more healthy potentially. Um, I think we could restore, I'm going to keep the, I'm just going to do credit and undo this. Again, they have five tags. We can make it six. That we can't protect this. Oh, one mistake. My sister Dara says hi as well. Dara, I've heard of you. You seem like a nice person. Thanks for t taking care of Patrick in a way that he so desperately needs. Um, hopefully you're doing well. Imp coming down, so we're going to lose probably our restore there. If anything, they probably have to trash the bladder word. But at this point, like we're one 
There's no boom in the deck, by the way. So this is going to be an absolute nightmare to close the game out. Yeah, this is not going to go good for us. On one credit, there's no ice we can res. They don't have Bologna credits, but they have two installables. We have to watch out for that. They also imp the restore, which like maybe, but if they saw on the top of the deck of market forces, oh, they imped a degree mill. Consume, and now they're going to run it? No, they're just going back. She's not watching. Okay. One hit of Paladin. Okay. So the degree mills and archives, if they're on Mad Dash, there's no Psycho in this, no Orbital. It's just like all seeing eye, I think. Three market forces and three copies of uh, the other one. This is not like, um. sorry, this is, uh, it's very much like the Reality Plus list. Honestly, it might be a raid to purge. How do they empty the imp? Oh, they emptied the imp using um, freedom. I don't think the money matters. I'm just going to do credit, credit. Uh, credit. I guess we do credit, credit, because we can always res this to duck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let alone we're going to have to res R&D. All right, this is the problem. It's like we could play boom in the list, and some of the lists, instead of playing restore, are playing boom. It makes a lot of sense. She heard that part and left. Uh, you can have, I think, four cards here. What else are they playing? So it's six credits or four cards because they played a, a copy of um, Wildcat Strike. Interesting. I did see on a uh, recording Brandon choosing four cards before. In terms of cards, what are we punished by? Like they already have their nuts uh, economy card, the consume. There's not much else they can play. I think it's the cards. Credits is not that important. We giving them a mad dash. I don't know if they're on mad dash. Maybe they are. Yeah, I'm going to respect the mad dash. This is also good because we have market forces. We want them to have money, right? How's it going, Terrence? They have no other tools to draw? No, they generally don't. Uh, where did their zero go? Didn't they have a zero? Why do I feel like they had a zero? Oh, they stole a degree. Uh, yeah, sorry. I know where the zero went. They uh, stole a degree mill. Ladder weight. Hit a sure gamble. Nice. Uh, Nasix got a credit. Yeah, yeah. Zero was the first. Okay, I'm going to draw once. Okay, that's good. We can get that on our archives because they are tagged. Uh, we can put this in new remote. Just get this in archives. Again, we're just trying to top deck. I honestly, like at this point, we just need to get our credits. Like this is where I feel like we're running to the bladder word a bit too much. Because if we just had credits here, we could push for remotes every. But yeah, we don't have boom. If we had boom, this might be a, a bit of a faster matchup. They also did think that server seven might be a spin doctor. And with a single botulist, like they can get through this. The question is like, we need to get a market forces and then use that to go into a Bologna. And at some point we probably do want to purge the consume. It just won't be right now. They're just drawing. Yeah, they're trying to find something. They threw out a paperclip. Okay, we'll res this. And maybe we should have kept that on res, but we do need money if we want to transition to scoring out. Uh, we hit a steel skin scarring, so they actually got more powerful. Uh, There's no way we can duck this turn. It's your fault I got into Arkham Horror. Cool, my wallet. <laughs> you don't have to get everything at once, uh, but Arkham Horror has been really good. And the new set actually looks quite exciting. I'm really excited for the new set. HQ? Dirty laundry. Reminder to use Nasex to duck. Um, yeah, I guess we could. Yeah, we could. Because of the pad campaign and, the, and this. So we'd, we'd just be able to. Uh, you can have the money. We're going to take your money away. I wonder if they're going to transition to clearing tags. I don't think so. Frank Feta. <laughs> we might have to bounce that sooner than later. It's a toll booth. We can't raise a toll booth. Oh, that is something we want to self-growth program. I oh, wish we got the Rashida off. Have some more tags. <laughs> the flannel channel, flannel crew. You're saying you flannel dub too? It's a good, it's good weather for this. All right, I'm gonna do place two power counters, place two power counters. Then we'll do the bladder weight. Another bladder weight. Oh, we can get him. Welcome to prison. Uh, do we want to purge this for six credits? No, I don't think so. How good is R&D good enough. We just are scared because they're on Bologna credits. It's so worth it though. Yeah, Dane doesn't talk about this enough, but but Dane is a content creator for for Arkham. Uh, Miss Katonic University Radio, check it out. It's good. Any idea if there's going to be streaming our worlds, Dave? Hundred percent. There's going to be. We'll talk about it at the news section. But Twitch.tv slash now it's Null Signal Games or sorry Null Signal Netrunner. They'll be streaming the servers tournament. They'll be streaming Standard Standard World Championship and this uh, Startup World Championship at the end. This IP block is res is not great because they can both through it. Yeah, this can be streamed. 
The couch has four different flannel shirts on the back. I'm wearing my favorite flannel. Gotta get some more. Not sure why I wear anything else. There's like this quintessential red and black checkered Canadian flannel that's pretty common. We're able to totally duck this out, right? Um, I, I don't have the flannel, thinking. So here they're probably going to degree meal back the Friday chip and the imp. We've dressed Eevee in that. You have it? Oh, welcome to Canada, Eevee. You're going to like it here. Oh, they had access to Paperclip. So this is them playing around, uh, well, the, well, not only can they shuffle this, which I don't think they want to, but they're basically playing around um, market forces. This means the blown is a bit easier, though. Uh, we cannot kill them. We're going to do a lot. Like, they still have to draw every single turn because we're getting double bladder over here. You couldn't duck on seven credits to do that, Nat. It only worked because you paid four to put counters on Essex before you gained the credit from Pad Campaign. Minimum credits you could actually have gone to is five. So the problem is, like, I didn't have the credits yet to spend is what you're saying? Oh, because I paid money that I got with the bladder word off the bladder word trigger. I totally see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That tracks. So I did that incorrectly because the idea is that for the implementation on JNet's a bit weird because whenever you gain credits, that means I've actually gained the credit first. So here, the idea is like, okay, I think I can do this. So here, if I gain a credit from, from bladder word, I can put two on here. So I'll do this bladder word first. Then, if I gain a credit from this, I'll be five. So if I play it's two, I put on here. I duck that one. And then that's fine. Yeah. Oh, I could have also CDM traced underneath. Yeah, yeah, that's worth knowing. Okay, well, the game's in R&D. You're getting double bladder word at a turn. We have 16 credits on here that we're not interested in. It's fun how that is. We only have five credits to res ice. They have an endurance. They have also have more money on that, which they're offshoring. They could come for our bladder words. I think if they do that, we're like, okay. The question is, do we protect the bladder words? I honestly don't. Do we just protect the bladder words? I'm worried that we're going to endurance and lose the game. So I'm going to do that. But oh, I don't want to click for credits. I'm clicking for credits. At this point, we probably should have just cracked this. DLR heyday was 2015. Um, No, I think 2016, did Tsuzo? Because 2015, Danger Genio was playing, um, and uh, what's it called? Replicating Perfection. And then I forgot who his runner was. But 2016, that's when like Bayoken was playing Data League Reversal. And oh, maybe it was the year before. Yeah, maybe you're right. Seems it would have been good versus CTM. It's a bit of a mixed bag. Yeah, this is where we're on too few credits. This is where I'm considering IP blocking this up. I, I don't know if it's the right play. Here they have to trash it for the virus counter on the consume. But yeah, that was actually locking them out. Uh, have more tags though. I, I Yeah, we probably should be on boom at some point. I feel like this is the problem where closing the game actually is quite difficult in this list. Checking in, Dane, how's it going? Played this deck a few days ago and protecting bladder was surprisingly oppressive. Also reminded me to finish my audits in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it's seeming okay. Like they're doing work. They have to respect them. I feel like though the fact that we have to be on low credits and we still have to protect them, that is a bit of a dichotomy. And admittedly, this matchup is a bit interesting because they can trash him for like one or zero, zero credits. Um, so that's a bit of a problem. Love the content. Hey, cheers. Glad you're liking it. Okay, so here we cannot trigger bladder word. Oh, we should have boosted the trace. Oh, shit. I should have boosted the trace. Do you mind? I just need to boost the trace one, if I'm not mistaken. You can trigger? No. No, because we only get down to five. Oh, we could off the pad campaign. Yeah, you're right. I think you're right. If we do the pad campaign first. Love the content. Cheers. Catch a full video in the morning. Enjoy in the morning. Finish your audits. Okay, so here if we get the credit, we go six, and then we can go down to four, so I can pay two. Yeah, you're right, because the pad campaign actually would be credit negative, so I could have done it. Barely. So this is technically wrong. Threat assessment. Unfortunately, this is now a totally dead card in hand, uh, because they don't care about the tags. Drawing here is, like, a bit ugly. The unfortunate part is, like, we could just draw into the winning agenda and they could snipe it. Uh, that's obviously not good. Do we want to play this to give them two more tags? Again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, this, I don't like this. Study just ceasing to exist today is wild. I don't think anyone's really surprised about that. I thought of anything Stadio was going to transition into, um, oh, uh, maybe we should have been able to protect our uh, NASX once they pulled this down. I feel like this might've been a bit too hasty because uh, this counts, yeah, it taxes boat. Um, but yeah, I feel like Stadia probably saw use um, as a, uh, 
like a way to for like remote work like that technology seems incredibly valuable but i don't think they had you know the numbers you maybe wanted to play it more to the prevent them to using the trash corp card synergy cards what do you mean ritsuka this yeah we're gonna lose our nasx oh we're not maybe threat assessment I mean, the fact that the storefront straight up doesn't exist, no one's surprised has been failing. Oh, they, because uh, I thought they were going to like cease and desist as of January. I, I was didn't know that the storefront just fell apart. But that makes sense. You don't want to sell products to the last day and then be like, sorry, you can't use it tomorrow. Empowering the chip and consume for more tempo. Oh, like just get it out of our hand. To some extent, though, we're going to need cards in hand to like protect ourselves. Hippo is pretty impactful. Ugly. All right. Okay. I don't know how to win. That's a reader. Yeah, I know. It seems reasonable, though. It seems reasonable to vote. I don't know how to win. With 20 credits, I don't know how to win. Like, we could be on 27 credits here and still have no way to win. I guess we need to find something. All right. Market forces, like, correct stuff. Uh. Uh. Draw, draw. Okay, now we can discard that. That would be perfect. We have a self growth program, which is kind of what we want to do. We want to self growth the boat, but we need to survive a turn. The problem is, if we play one of these cards, we lose the degree mill. So, like, I don't think we can afford to play a card here, but they could obviously trash your self growth program. So, I'm just going to do this because now we have no more bladder words. We're just going to have 27 credits. Is this not on Psycho? No, it, it isn't. It has all seeing eye. And mind you, some of them are playing Boom. We went for Restore instead, uh, but it's not. What would R plus do? R plus would just grind out the game a bit longer. R plus also like was classically a bit better at replaying their same um, traps over again, or sorry, Punishment, which we have only played one uh, Tag Punishment card so far. Please don't hit the self-growth program. Um, so that's like not good for us. But here, like if we land a self-growth program, we trash the boat and then they're kind of out of the game. Market forces. Okay, we survived a turn. So we need a transition to scoring. We did do a fair bit of damage, I think, with the, um, what's it called? Okay, this is getting ugly. So we want to start with self-growth program. So it's the boat, and we can return another card to hand, because of course they are tagged. The question is, what is the card? Uh... Probably the consume, it's their only economy card. Okay, that will take all their money. And then behind, an Endless Eula is like a bit dodgy. Uh, it's probably credits. I don't think they're on Chisel. They're not on Chisel, chisel right? When you're Psycho, they clear all the tags. When you're not Psycho, they float tags. It's just how Psycho works. The thing with Psycho is it's like hard in this list. Like Psycho, ideally, you know, you're playing Beal and we're not on Beal. 13 tags is enough to score a seven point Beal. They zeroed? Oh, they uh, zeroed and hit the endurance. Of course, that makes sense. It's not coming back. Threat assessment's doing work. This is probably a late combo, but it's wild. Archive Memories is banned. I feel like it feels like banning Biotic, but Biotic actually is playable. Archive Memories is just like, like, do you think they, they would modernly reprint Deja Vu? No, it's because it's busted because there are problems. Uh, and that card like exacerbates the issues. I honestly think that we do advance advanced market forces. Because the only way we lose to this is to the money. Yeah, they sunk their own boat. Hit a paperclip. This is pretty good. It gets them through their deck. Uh, in terms of the economy cards that we have to play around, it's like dirty laundries mostly. Uh, they've only played two. Consumes back. They didn't hit that for a couple hits. That's a five influence card. You don't want to lose that to zero. And now we're hoping we don't draw an agenda. This deck actually is on three daily business show. And we didn't draw any till early, and that's another really important card to help us draw into the punishment that we close the game out with. Deja Vu is closer to friends. Uh, no. Well, with viruses, yeah, but like the virus decks were pretty minimal. Uh, it was only noise. Nobody else was doing that. People were playing Deja Vu to replay account siphon, to replay uh, what's it called, blackmail. Right? It wasn't get your tempo viruses. Hey, Lynn Miller, it's been a while. Hey, your hair's looking fresh today. Thank you. I just got a cut. How you doing? It's been a minute. Hopefully you're doing well. Okay. 
Still got to figure out how to square the last agenda. Hopefully it's a Bologna. They're back into the credits. We played, again, no archive memories, so we can't be toxic. We can't just be like market forces over and over again. If we want to spin doctor for uh, our market forces, we're leaving an agenda out there. That's obviously not good. They have a paperclip too, so they can get through the IP block for seven credits. I think double daily business show is like, okay. It keeps low cards in hand, which is a bit annoying. We don't really need to get the pad campaign down. Drawing once is not even good. I want to get the daily business shows because I feel like that's going to be important for us. Uh, we want to keep one of these servers open so that we can score an agenda behind it. I think there's a big chance that Tollbooth is the server because it actually has a hard end to run. We I don't know if they're on Botulus. And if they're on Botulus or Boat, then like we want the end endless EULA. So it's a question of what our scoring remote is. We probably have one more piece of ice in the, in the game, but uh, we'll do this new remote. I'm just going to click for credit because I don't want to draw. Because if we draw, we don't have any good way to put the agenda anywhere. Is the win in the bin for them? Yes, it is. But we have a spin doctor, so not exactly. But technically, yes. And now the degree mills are blank. But luckily, our deck is mostly Bologna's. And if they steal the last our AR enhanced security, we also lose to that. And it's not something we want to score at. It doesn't really matter. Finally moved in with my partner and finally got engaged. So I'm doing a great deal better than usual. Yo, congrats to both of you. That's awesome to hear. Hey, that's fantastic. No machinations? Uh, no. For some reason, no. I think there could be. Maybe you cut out this awful threat assessment I put in here. But immediately this card's good if they don't go tag me. And right now they're on eight credits. They probably have burst in their hand. We can res all these. Again, we have infinite economy. Now we're going to dig deep. Okay, so obviously we don't want the Drago. The question is, can we steal a Bologna? And again, a lot of times they might not be able to score the Bologna, but they might just like, oh, we need another ice. Click for credits should be a t-shirt. I almost wanted to make, I used to have a credit t-shirt. I made some t-shirts, by the way. We'll talk about that at the news, but there's some Metropolitan Grid t-shirts. And by some, I mean like very frighteningly few. Okay, so Bologna is something we can score out. For them to get through this, they need 13 credits. It's, uh, 11 credits, which they could. They could just do credit, 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 run. So I feel like we want to bottom all of those until we, we draw another piece of ice. Oh, we choose the cards we bottom. Okay. Some two plus. Cole, what do you mean? Bologna behind toll booth is probably not enough. Like, uh, actually, there's a chance. But then we'd have to pop the spin doctor first. Otherwise, we lose. I think we want to get them on a Drago play. Like, I think of anything we just stall here, we do server five install advance advance and see if they like run this with uh, enough. Like, this is a good thing that we can do with Drago. Yeah, I a Drago. I like that a lot. How will streaming look at worlds if you don't want to give away info while people are playing or commentators in separate rooms? It's obviously a, a serious issue. Um, from my understanding, last I saw the floor pan, the commentators are in like a, a they're on this the floor, but they're in like, I think it's a tent. Like there's a division and there's some distance between them and the table. We're obviously hoping that there's no hearing. They'll be testing done in person. I think if it is, you know, if they can hear us, we have to talk quieter. We have to keep that in mind. I, I've actually commentated things before, like Canadian Nationals, where like the caster booth was, I think, closer to the table than you'd wanted to, but there still weren't issues. You can just put baffling up and other stuff to get around that. I think worst comes to worst. I don't know if No Signal Games is ready to do that. You can always put headphones on the um, the players that can hear each other. So that helps for communication and that makes it harder for them to... Uh, to hear the casters, but it's definitely a huge concern and we'll only figure out in person how it works. Issue with this is they'll know it's a EULA. Maybe next agenda goes behind Tollbooth after. They, they, uh, oh, there goes their money. We did it. If I res the EULA here, it ends the run. I want to end the run. ASMR Andre, it'll be really nice. I don't know what microphones they have, but there's a chance it's going to be lovely. They can break and trash? Yeah, I don't want them to trash because of the, the what's it called? The Friday chip. Also, yeah, if they, now the problem is if there was a toll booth and they called it right, that's a, unfortunately not. Um, Yeah, if it was a toll booth, they can like trash the toll booth and that's a problem. Luckily for us, we can do Turnpike into Bologna. I'm just kidding. Uh, We can return the... I think at this point we just jammed the Bologna. Because they need three credits and five credits. Yeah, I'm just jamming the Bologna. Yeah, let's just hope for the best. You go back in. You go back in. Server two. Good luck, me. All right. In the past, commentators have had to be very conscious of it and are pretty much whispering. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll see. I'm okay whispering. Hopefully the audio setup is good enough. 
I'm not sure if they went. They were trying to set up work externally to find like um like uh, equipment and people that would help stream. I think they're doing it internally, so I I, I don't know what the setup is. Uh, we'll obviously find out soon. Opponent plays one imp. Yeah, but they still have to get through this. They don't have three credits. But yeah, if they imp it, it's a problem. We have two more spin doctors. We did just shuffle. Okay, they can get through this. They have one good run here, and they would have to steal the degree mill or the AR enhanced security. So it's two and 16, and we just full shuffled. So the ones that were bottomed aren't bottomed anymore. All right, we lost IP block. Totally fine. Uh, enjoy your tags. Okay, they hippoed that, and we res this. Again, Bolognas, two of them are safe. There's four agendas. They can steal half of the agendas in the list. This they have to break. Luckily, they have the full endurance. Oh, probably should hit that. Seems important. Seems like you just overwrite the dragon and leave spin on the table. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right to see so. I don't think there was a reason to... Um. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I don't think there was a reason that we had to get rid of that. I was like more happy with the toll booth because I think it played around. I don't honestly know what this plays around. It's harder for them to get through this, I think, than this. Here they could have like, I don't, they had zero credits actually. So I don't know what the like the the, the line would be, but like I think the three credits on the toll booth is a bit more impactful. Ah, they need six for this. I don't, if they chisel us, but even then they don't have five credits. I think you're right. I don't think there's any reason to shuffle back in. And we might lose to that shuffle. If they steal the green mill, we'll know. I think we're okay. They can't go back. They did trash the spin doctor using a Friday chip. 12.5%. One out of two out of one out of eight. Yeah, 12.5. My worry was that they could break a EULA trash with Hippo one counter, use the ID and trash Drago for more counters, and they have a six credit consume next turn with the EULA res. Okay, that's it. Uh oh, he was up there. I think this is the bottom card. I don't know if this is the next card. I don't know the order of this. Whatever. Yo, games are going to go long. That was 33 minutes. <laughs> I'm, I'd rather be on boom than restore, huh? How was the bladder work? You need to, to take those down, right? Yeah, the bladder words actually like showed what they you wanted them to show, which is they were a nuisance. But you also saw all the awkwardness that we had in our side of the table where it's like ducking to four means we couldn't res any of our ice, let alone we drew our two biggest ice early in the game uh, where this deck has like white spaces. It has IP blocks, it has a lot of other stuff, turnpike that you're happier to put the thing behind than like a six credit endless EULA res. 90 plus credit corpus wild Cody. We had like a NASX with like four or five counters on it. It just went down. We're like, yeah, I don't I don't care. We need to be under four. It hurts. Oh, for sure. Yeah. As criminal, like Blatterworth is a problem. Mind you, criminal has access to Miss Bones and a better run economy. And they can put down an Amakua. That's an issue for us for sure. Uh, 419 tax. I don't think we care about. I didn't know the deck was essentially the R plus package. So I was hoping a snipe of boom and be okay. Yeah, this is uh, the Kings. It's just R plus with uh, an asset shell. 33 minutes online is 66 minutes live. I don't see maybe it might be the opposite. And it's largely because I'm streaming. Cool. We did it. And straight up, like if I want to call what could win worlds, I think there's a huge chance that freedom with endurance can do it. Like abstractly, like looking at the meta it has some really good matchups. Hey, thanks. You too. Thanks. Catch your hand. Um, right. Like it can deal with sports pretty well. They can deal with assets pretty well. Op and CTM, all that stuff's good. Uh, the endurance helps a lot, especially when you have endurance with Boomerang, right? Like you can deal with Ag Infusion. You can deal with some of the Rush stuff. I don't know how good your PD matchup is. I feel like you might want to consider Bonchilises, but maybe you just don't because of Magnet. They got to the bottom of their stack. They only have five cards left. But I feel like this is like a pretty consistent deck and uh, it's probably pretty flexible to the meta. I'd, I would be surprised to see no freedom with endurance. Lore wise in the game, Kamala's on every newscast in the world becoming the most well-known runner. Thanks to all those tags. We know where freedom is so much. Haven't played How's It Going Smitty since Terminal Directive and the slow death of playing in store. Really fun to watch you play again. Yo, Smitty. Firstly, welcome back. It's been a bit. 
Uh, I don't know if you know, a lot of people are actually back out playing Netrunner because of what Nisei or now Nell Signal has been doing. New cards just came out, more cards coming at the end of the year. It's a world championship next week. So if you're interested in going out and playing, firstly, you don't need actual cards. You can play with proxies. It's totally fine and legal if you don't have your cards anymore. But there is organized play going on all around. Uh, if you get into the green level clearance discord, ask around. You can find some people if you want to play. It's really quite good. Freedom running into HQ was a televised event. Everyone come up and watch. Okay. You want to talk about some news? We got a lot of news to go through and then we'll go talk about the meta and talk about what we think is going to win worlds and like what you should be gauntlet testing and all this sort of stuff. I see the new cards. They look great. They're really good. They're really good. Uh, it's fantastic stuff and you can get them printed um, from professional printers and it's it's like really affordable too. Even like even what it costs versus to what it used to cost. It's, it's a better deal. All right. Yes. News and meta. Yo, Dave is pumped. Let's do it. Firstly. Oh, I want to shout this at the top. Rosenheim City Grid is a YouTube channel. Uh, not a lot of subscribers here, but it's like so good to see this stuff, like to see table play. Again, all these links will be in the YouTube description. Um, this was at the German Nationals. This was filmed by Rosenheim. Um, I'm not sure who's the name of the person behind Rosenheim. It's been a minute, but like just to see table play uh, in good quality with good audio. You hear all the players is just a nice treat. And Brandon actually playing a CTM. The CTM deck at German Nationals is on um, on this channel. Unfortunately, it's a 10 minute game. It's it's a really bad watch. I'll be honest. The table, it's just 10 minutes of single axes on R&D winning. So you're not going to see Brandon do anything really cool. Unfortunately, uh, he came in second in the whole event, though. So it happened later. That's for sure. Is this shorty Ginevra? Oh, I, I wish I knew. Uh, but one really cool thing I want to shout out here, here on the left is Bridgman, and Bridgman does really well at the event, let's just say that. But uh, we, I made a, a tips video, that comes up later, but you'll notice that Bridgman is note-taking. And the one thing that you see him note-taking throughout the event is he's, whenever he accesses HQ or the top of R&D, he generally writes it down. And while I haven't seen a lot of people actually note-take in playing Organized Play Netrunner, which is a thing you can do and you've been able to do for the last couple of years, you couldn't classically in FFG times, uh, the way that he's doing it, where he's just recording what he's seen on central servers, which is public information, I guess R&D, you kind of want to hide that, your, your paper a bit. But I think that's a really good way to do note-taking. And I think more people are going to do that, even players who classically didn't feel like they needed to. I, I think that's quite nice. That's nostalgic seeing. Yeah, right? Like, this is what Netrunner content used to be back in, 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 I don't know, when I did the channel, at least, and a lot of other people were doing this back in the day, like uh, Trace 5 or what is it called? Teamwork Cast back in the day? That stuff was great. Someone who only plays Startup, I have no idea what the meta looks like after the Rezeki Pad Tap Ben. Yo, Cole, let's talk about that real quick. This is something that's really interesting. So I put up a video recently called Tags Please in which uh, a, a meta mate sent a deck list, and it's a Tag Me Standard uh, deck. And I've been classically on the channel only uploading startup gameplay because I know there's a lot of newer players who are exclusively playing startup. And I want to say two things about this video. Firstly, I messed up and I should have said and I asked people to like, because I linked the deck list below, go give this a like on, on Netrunner DB because this is not my deck at the point. And some people have, but I definitely should have shouted that out so Claim can get some more uh, internet karma, that's for sure. But the one thing I want to shout out is like when I was playing this, either as the runner or as the corp, I was incredibly surprised. Or not, I don't know, incredibly surprised. I was like, it was very obvious that out of the majority of games that we are playing, and mind you, in this video, I go out of the way to show if there's a card that like we haven't seen, I, I'll put it up on screen, right? So you can see them. I think that helps. But the vast majority of the cards you see in the standard gameplay are startup cards. I was talking to this with Ysengrin, and Ysengrin ran the numbers. Ysengrin pulled in all the deck lists because he had them from America's Continentals, the America's Continentals that happened last month. What percentage do you think of the standard card pool is startup cards at the America Continentals? What would you guess? Although I love playing the game live, I started playing in April, May 2020, and I think watching the game on Jinteki is a great stream. I think watching just people's hands is not a great watch. Uh, I see what you mean. And some some streams have like, you can see their hands, like uh, some of the old dodgebong things. You could actually see the player's hands. I, I see what you mean, but it's exciting where you don't know what's happening as an external. It's a different game. 75%, 70%. Yeah, that's just about it. I think the numbers were out of unique cards that every single person brought in a 70 in a hundred player meta, 60% of the unique cards, so cards by name, were startup cards. But by quantity, 70% of all the cards at America Continentals by quantity are startup cards. And I just want to make that very clear. For players who are playing startup and don't want to get into standard because they see it's a massive card pool. It is, but also practically it isn't. And that number might be a bit more generous because a lot of people were playing the lat deck, uh, which is largely a startup deck. Um, NSG power creep, I wouldn't exactly call it that, but yeah, the NSG cards are quite good. 
Um, but yeah, that's the point is if you are a startup player and you're worried about getting to standard because you have to run on just 300 card pool, a lot of the, like the huge majority, uh, not the vast majority, but way more of the cards in standard are bad compared to good compared to the null signal games where the majority of cards are bangers. And then there's like dag, right? That's how it works. And I just want to make that very clear because I'm trying to make content to show you like how to get into standard and how to get more out of watching the standard world championship next weekend. Uh, but I'm telling you, if you're playing startup, you're like 70% there. There's just like every faction has two, three cards that are worth knowing. And then you're kind of good. Why so rude to the cat? <laughs> Got to nuke something, you know, HHN wasn't even that good in standard. Uh, no, it wasn't. Poor Dig, I know, I know, poor Dig, sorry, cat. Real resume, real testament to null signal. But, but what do you mean? Oh, like their percentage of cards? Yeah. Maybe with great commentating, I could feel differently, but it would be nice to see more camera angles than just hands. Yeah, yeah, for sure for this. Like, this is, you know, like huge shout outs. Like, it's awesome to see this, but this is not produced produced like worlds will have commentators other people who used to do this i did it classically like we'd show the credits and all that that makes it obviously a bit more exciting but like this is still effort this is still work and i'm so excited to watch this to see like what good players across the planet are doing like that's so cool to me still so anyways hey sophie how's it going 85 percent a bit high but that's like that's not far off that's not far off People mostly scared of HHN. That's the thing, though, and I'm, I'm going to stop saying this because I feel like a broken record. If you're playing startup, you are dealing with less fair cards and hard hitting news on a regular basis. Maybe that will change when the startup gets a ban list. But uh, let me tell you, there's way worse, more toxic stuff in startup than standard because standard is curated. So, yeah. I wonder what it divides by cycle big box percentage wise. Oh, that's actually interesting. And I feel like a lot of standard players could tell you like what percentage of cards and cycles are playable. Uh, the deluxes, not so much always, uh, but some of the cycles, like it's, it's a weird thing from like Netrunner history, like the red sand cycle and the flashpoint cycle have the highest highs, but they also have the lowest lows. So it's like, there's packs where there's like six banger cards, but then there's a whole pack of 20 cards where like none of them see competitive play. It's really weird out there. Good video might be top five cards to be aware of each infection. Yeah, flip. I got feedback from that from like Patreons that uh, one thing I want to do is to make like, hey, you're playing against HB. Here are some archetypes. Here are cards you need to play around as a startup to standard jump. But it's like, really, I'm, I just promise you, you're already playing standard. But now corpse can have win conditions. <laughs> uh, Dodge Punk stream for Magnum Opus 2018 was top tier. I don't know how anyone can top it. Yeah, Dan, we're hoping you do. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was really quite good. I did the intro for that. That was why, because the cat helped too. It was great. Bastion is only extremely annoying. It's fine. Yeah, great. I mean, a large chunk of old standard card pools are also still core set cards. And since NSG replaces the core set with system update, it's an even, uh, it's natural. Yeah, that's that's a big point too, Chaos, is that the the system, uh, what's it called? Update 20 is like old Netrunner cards. So those technically get, you know, fathered in. I wanted to say like a gender neutral term for grandfathered. So I thought I would just do say granded in, and then I just say fathered in. So I totally undid what I wanted to do. Fantastic. Keep a out eye out tomorrow. I want to get all the Continentals data and try to do actual numbers on that. Yo, Ysengrin, I'm excited to see that. Also, speaking of Ysengrin, Ysengrin put out a video just the other day. Uh, we play a challenge when you watch a Ysengrin video is can you go 10 minutes without Ysengrin being self-deprecating? Impossible. Uh, I really like this video. He basically goes through all of Eternal to talk about because Eternal has a different balancing system where uh, there are like four banned cards, but mostly cards have points. And then you have a budget to spend on making your deck. You have seven points of budget and each play set of a card uh, is, is worth like so, so many points. So some of the strongest cards are worth three points, arguably four points at some point at time. But it's really cool. And this is really cool for people who haven't seen Eternal, understanding like why cards are like classically busted. It's it's similar to the video we put out in the last couple of weeks about like why cards are banned in standard, but it goes far back and you kind of just see the <laughs> the worst parts of Netrunner to some extent. But Eternal's really exciting because we're gonna have a big Eternal. There's big Eternal events at Worlds coming up. Um for some players who haven't played Eternal, it, you can probably go up to some folks who have Eternal decks and just play them to see what they look like because it is something different and it's very, very splashy and very interesting. So I'm glad that this came out because I don't know what Eternal looks like and and Jeff even kindly put down some Eternal deck list, which is great. <laughs> so many shout outs. Nefer paperclip in the same pack will never get old it is really funny. It is really funny. So in the same, okay, this is like comedy for standard players. Paperclip is the best breaker for, for barriers. It has been since it came out. It's hard to beat that. And like, this is card number 24. Card number 23 is this breaker, which technically is more efficient. But the fact that they came out in the same pack is just absolute comedy. It'd be like, oh, cool, Niffer. And he'd look at the next card. He'd be like, wow, 
It's nice we have coasters. Grandfathered, shepherded. That's a good one. Bad things my brain is spinning in circles and I can't sleep. Good thing I'm awake to catch much good live for once. I can, we can make this ASMR if it'll help you get to sleep. The jump into standard was way less of a whole thing than I expected. Is he nailing it? I'm now more excited to play standard than startup at Worlds, and that's not where I started. That is so cool to hear. And I, I honestly promise you, like, I know not getting cards, having the FFG products, they're hard to find. Uh, but people are putting altered versions of the sets online and like, oh, man, standard's great. The video is really cool. Makes me want to play Eternal, even though I'm super new. Is I, Try it out. Definitely try it out. Try some of the decks that, that Jeff posted very kindly. I called him out. Yeah, I'll him out. Andre is so nice to me in the shout outs and then he just blasts Jeff. <laughs> Classic. Um, no, no, I, I, I think this video is great. I'm just going to tease Jeff for sure. All right, we got some news. Hold on. I watched the video last night while updating my card pool post rotation. Good view, even though I hadn't played a game of Eternal. Exactly. Like I haven't even played a game of Eternal and like it's very interesting to see what it looks like. I think the big question for me is like what op looked like into Eternal World. And apparently, yeah, it's good. Apparently it can win on turn one. That's great. I honestly curious at what Eternal looks like when I know all the cards and how wild some cards and combos can be. The thing is, like, even like playing Eternal, if you don't know what Eternal is, if someone hands you an Eternal deck at, like, say, the World Championship, you're just kind of in for a ride. Like, you read the card and be like, wait, are you serious? And then you do something that's, like, busted powerful. And then your opponent does something and you read the card and be like, what? You can do that? And then they do something busted. And, like, even on that, it's, it's, you're going to get to excitement immediately, generally. NFR is chargeable. Wait, isn't it for power counters? Yeah, it probably is. Played the standard circuit opener a week after the switch from startup and it was great. Yeah, I love to hear it. That's so cool. The way you can do that, moments in turn all the best. Yeah, especially when you see interactions of cards that were like were not balanced to be together because of rotation. Yeah, you can charge this. It's technically a better breaker, right? I should probably have posted the turn one op rather than my Jeeves combo list. I was trying to look at a list to see you, Sengren, if that was the uh like could I turn one in this? It didn't seem like you could. It seemed good though. Kind of want to play with Eternal Card Pool, but technically I already am. <laughs> okay, uh, this is news. And again, this is... We knew this was coming. So what was formerly known as Project Nisei has changed their name to Null Signal Games. So you're going to hear a lot of talk about Null Signal Games. Go to the Null Signal Games Twitch channel. It's called Null Signal Netrunner to watch a stream. All this stuff is, is you know, they wanted to change their name. We talked about this a while ago. In short, they weren't comfortable with having the name Nisei. Not so much because the name is inherently offensive. I feel like there was a lot of conversation about that. They're saying like, no, it's not offensive. It, that doesn't matter. The problem was there was a name for a cultural group of which they were not. And they were uncomfortable having the name. They can change the name whether they want to or not. And they did. And now it's Null Signal Game. Which uh, is games. The website Nisei.net still gets you there. So your muscle memory will still get there. But we're going to take our effort and try to call it Null Signal. And it, we're, we're basically 60% there. Next week will be perfect. Uh, so there's an article about it. Uh, they've updated. And this is the thing that I was really worried about. Is like all of their Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. All that stuff I think is just the same stuff. And has been renamed. So if you go to YouTube and you subscribe to the YouTube channel. It is just the other name. They just migrated it. So you don't have. They don't lose all their content. They don't lose everything. So that stuff's great. Anyways, check that out. It's all there. It's good. Blake, are there any cards that reference NFTs? I feel like uh, they should be referenced Crypto Crash. That would be funny. Blake, there are. Um, specifically Artificial Crypto Crash. But they're made two promos for worlds of blockchain and Crypto Crash that are like pretty kind of on the nose jokes about uh, crypto in general. Do it for the world swag. So are we playing Eternal? Flashpoint Cycle is the only set I'm missing. I've got proxies of Qatar and Red Sand. And I found Escalation, or at least I have Obelisk and Black Orchestra. Oh, I should bring extra black orchestras to uh, Worlds. I, I I have a bunch. I don't think they're mine, though. I don't know if I can. Hey, Twin Blades. Good evening. Great videos this week. And Null Signal's a good name. Hey, glad you're liking the videos. Glad you're liking the name. But yeah, this is a new name. So if I ever say Nisei, correct me. Uh, we mean Null Signal going forward. So it eats my... Um, I've had to do reshoots. This is also a really interesting uh, story. Um, Mess and Chesfo was a card that came out in Midnight Sun. Uh, they they go through this. This is written by Joe, uh, the quality, diversity, and inclusivity uh, person on Nisei. And I I heard rumblings about this, but I wasn't sure what exactly what it was. Uh, but when Mess and Chesfo came out, the art doesn't really align well with the theme and the flavor and the flavor text. You read this. It's actually quite interesting. I think this is a really well put together article. Um, and in short, they wanted to change it. They, they got some feedback specifically from, from uh, people in uh, the Ukraine right now, talking about like Russian imperialism, and they just felt like a lot of parts of this did not work out uh, really well. So what they're doing is they're doing a couple of terms. Firstly, they, they explain how they got here and what they're doing. Again, I heard rumblings before that they were a bit upset when this came out that they missed something, and I don't feel like they're... It seems like they're people that they have on board to consult for... Um, 
cultural uh, significance did not see the art. So what's happening is there's just a new Mestin Chesto art. If you go to Netrunner DB, it's already updated. Uh, this is the art that they have. They will be able to replace it for you free of charge if you contact them in a bit once they get it ready. If you go to Worlds, you should be able to pick this up. And there's a couple things. Firstly, this is another art from Balance Sheet, which is really cool that they could uh, retain the same artist to do a new version of it. The one thing that I don't think this article did, which I wish they did, is explain why this art. Because this art is obviously significant to the theme, uh, but I don't know what exactly I'm looking at. I'm going to have to obviously do more research. I would just love to know what this is, because obviously this is a very specific thing. They also changed the flavor text, which is really fun too, because I feel like some people had issues with the flavor text. Anyways, you'll get this at Worlds. This is going to be the de facto, uh, de the default version of the card moving forward. And in future printings, this will be the updated printing. And they ask specifically, if you have the old version, please try and bring the new version publicly if you can. If you don't, you're not going to be reprimanded, but they would appreciate you if you did, because this is a, a more uh, sensitive version. It may not be available at Worlds. Beans. Okay, well, that's fine. Speaking of Worlds, the fact that I know in Worlds there's a stream I'm going to be casting. I need to spend time going through and reviewing all alt arts because now alt arts are like everywhere in Netrunner. If I do not know the like Katara cycle project alt arts and someone plays it on camera, like there's a chance that the casting team is going to have no idea what they're looking at. And that scares me. So I'm going to have to spend like good hours looking through all the common alt arts to be like, okay, yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's that. That's that. So buckle up, everyone. Ball of card art, ball of move by null signal. Jaina makes that easy, I think. Oh, you no, know, but it's in person, right? You're looking at literal family trees spinning forth from a ledger of perceived familial value. Is that what it is? I don't know. It's cool. What I heard is the family histories were stored in books like at the bottom of the image. So this is about family histories. Very cool. The old letter was cool, but the new one, dang. Yeah, they're good. They're good. Uh, anyways, I, I thought this was a really well-written article um, and the way that they're handling it. Like Nisei, you know, Nisei has, shit, No Single has made some missteps and they've been called out and they've responded and apologized of certain things over the last, you know, while it's hard to run a, an organization of this size with this many people. Of course that's going to happen. But the ways that they've been responding to things have been like absurdly generous on all fronts. Just be like, yeah, we'll fix it for you. We'll send you a new copy free of charge. And like, dang, like companies wouldn't do that. Like, you know, for profit companies. There are a lot of alterts on not on Jaina. Oh, the majority are not on Jaina. Yes. Yeah, all the alterts that are on Jaina, it's a it's a much 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 smaller pool. Uh, this also came up recruiting balance team member. If you're interested in add joining the standard balance team, and they also mentioned standard balance for startup. Uh, hit them up. They do want somebody uh, with the in depth knowledge of competitive netrunner, but you don't have to be a high level player yourself. Get involved. It's a way to see the cards before they're out. But like, if you cannot, if you don't apply for this and then you complain about the standard balance, like I do, it's, you're not allowed to do that anymore. Um, check this out. It's on the Null Signal website. Eternal's point list. Again, this is meant to be our segue into your Sengren's thing, but they have updated some of the points. Op is worth one point. Eternal's cool. Uh, that's that. Oh, this is really cool. I haven't finished watching this, but I know um, I saw this and uh, Jeff mentioned this, but this is a New World Order. This is a video from Lost Geek, which is a pretty, really cool. It's a pretty cool uh, slideshow where um, Lost Geek, a very strong competitive player from the NWE, New World Order, which is a European testing group that's classically been doing very, very good uh, at good, good competitive Netrunner good. He goes through this video. Let me just refresh it in which he uh, talks about like how the process that now we have to watch an ad. Okay, we're not doing that. Uh, the process of testing and tuning and focusing your decks when you're deck building and specifically to talk about the idea of jank because we've been seeing more often than not over the last couple of years jank cards showing up to be the focus and centerpiece of like very competitive decks this is a fantastic watch again the link will be in the youtube video otherwise new world order with an e instead of an o for order as where you can find this but it's a really good watch i'm only halfway through but like it's an easy watch too Implementing the card reader from LLR for Worlds would be hard, especially with alt arts. Felipe, how's it going? I saw somebody in, in Interis a while ago had a card reader, but for alt arts is a problem because I, I don't know if we have that information pool. But yeah, it would be cool. I don't know whether you're going to see card arts on stream. I don't think you are. Do you know loading Ready Run and their MTG streams with their card reader? Impossible. That'd be perfect. Again, I, I, somebody has been working on one of those. I saw like a long time ago. From interviews with some of Magic's great commentary folks, spending time with full visual guides to the format and straight up reading the pronunciation guides allowed is valuable preparation. Yes, uh, I'm very happy that Null Signal shows out like pronunciation guides. I want to be on top of that as much as possible. If you know that there's a word that someone's saying on stream wrong because like you speak Russian properly, if you can find me at Worlds, uh, politely tell me and I'll try to do as good as a job if I'm not doing a good in that job. 
Shucks this weekend, Essen Spiel and PAX Australia next week. Stop by the Null Signal Games booth. This is such an amazing response to this issue. I can't see a way that this one can be taken badly. Like the card backs are free replacements, solve all issues, massive props, and SG team. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, other news, I put this video up just a couple days ago. It's just tournament advice if you're going to a big tournament or worlds. Um, the response has been really good. Uh, I hope this landed well. I, I felt like I had an additional advice. I don't remember what it is, but maybe give this a watch if you're going to a big event, either worlds or something else. It's just my tips of the things I've learned. Uh, putting cards down on the table for HQ accesses, that was shouted out in the comments. That's a very valuable thing. And you also saw that in the other video. This is the thing we talked about. Give this deck a like. Okay. Oh, I'm out of breath. How is picking a table to stream going to work? Will it just be one top table or multiple? So generally uh, they want to stream the toppest table they can, but either um, production, which I'm technically not production, I'm just talent at this point, makes a decision to what they see. So they could see like, oh, out of the top four tables. Okay, this is how it normally works, especially when we do on JNet stuff where I actually am production. We'll look at the top four or five tables and then we'll see like, okay, we've seen this person a lot. We've seen this deck a lot. We've seen this archetype a lot. This person might be on the list of please do not stream me. And then based off of that, they'll try and make a decision. Jeff is saying it's going to be one top table. I don't know if that means it's the toppest table, but ideally we see all the matchups and be like, oh, we haven't seen this person versus this person. And these people have interesting decks or these people are notable because they come from the same region or for different regions. And like, there's a lot of decisions. You just basically want to put on a good show. Once you start getting to the top cut, then obviously you're a bit restricted. So I think sometimes you go out of your way to see like the second table or like the fifth table, which are still really high tables in the field of that size, uh, just to show a bit more variance and a bit more like of the interesting meta. So Swiss rounds are a bit more flexible. Once you get to the top cut and they're all playing endurance, uh, <laughs> but still. Your card choices and your world's vid were low key great. Oh, I'm glad you liked that. I thought of some other ones after that I forgot. Is there any Netrunner card that has dice on it? I don't think there is. But that was actually a really fun project at the same time. I was top unless they do not stream. Orbital has it going. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so this was just published today, and this is awesome. So this is the actual World Championship schedule to give you an idea how long things are going to take. Caveat at the top, of course, schedules, you don't obviously get stuck to them all the time. Games run long, extensions, breaks, all this sort of stuff. So if anything, this is probably the more generous version of it. It might go longer than that. That's not from NSG. That's from me. Day zero is October 6th. That's Thursday, right? Sure Gamble doesn't have dice. Sure Gamble has cards on it, right? Wait, oh, new Sure Gamble. Wait, is she rolling dice on new Sure Gamble? No, it's just cards. I don't think there's dice on Neverner cards. I'm, I'm thinking there might be one where like you see people rolling dice in the background, like not run amok. What's the other one? Uh, run amok and Jason. Oh, this is definitely worth our time. Uh, <laughs> uh, from, I feel like there's probably some nice people playing dice in order and chaos. Mushin is cards and chips. Definitely cards and chips on Mushin. And the other side of it we used in the thumbnail. It's also cards and chips. Itinerant protesters. I feel like people are maybe playing dice here. There's an altered gamble with dice. I don't know if I know that one. I feel like people might be playing dice here. It doesn't look like they are. Showing off. I don't honestly remember what showing off has looks on it. No, it's just people hanging out. Looks like it could be art for vampire eternal. Spinner or flip switch counts as dice. I guess so, but not what I wanted. I'm just surprised that dice haven't shown up. I thoroughly enjoyed the world's video, even though I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. It's like generic tips for like most events and organized play. Please do call a judge. I think that's the most important thing. Oh, I have fun actually. Sorry. You have an altar gamble with dice. Okay. So maybe I'm missing this out. Okay. Uh, Pre-registration is on like, October 6th. You can get pre-registered. Now, October 7th, that's the Friday. And that's when the Crown of Servers team tournament starts. One thing that I think is missing is that it's not a very big explanation of how the team tournament works. I don't know if the rules are the same rules as before. I don't know whether it's within the supported format, but let's just talk about this team tournament real quick. Lucky Charm? Eh, not really. Kind of. Uh, probably more than I think it does. So the team tournament, you come with a team of three people. Each person has to represent a different faction. And then you play basically sitting across from you against another team sitting across from them. Yo, Ken Owen, how's it going? The full rules are on ABR. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, but there are some additional rules to this tournament that I think make it spicier and more fun that aren't here on the page. And they're probably up on ABR. The first thing is that you're actually allowed to talk between your teammates. 
So the idea is that maybe one of your players is a veteran Neverrunner player or knows some of the matchups better or the matchup you're playing. You can actually talk to each other. You can table talk freely between your friends. Be like, oh, you should mulligan that. Oh, what do you think you should do here? That's the rules when I last play a crown of service tournament. Someone will correct me if that's wrong. The one caveat was that in the last five minutes, you were not allowed to table talk. But that's awesome. I think that's a really fun way so that people can come together and not only play as a team, but actually like play as a team where like people can help each other out. And I think that's really good, really fun. Uh, Crown of Servers, mind you, some people will take it very competitively, but also a lot of people have this as like the really, really, really fun, goofy tournament. And I know on my team, uh, which we have a really funny name, it's actually the whole casting uh, crew uh, largely. Uh, we're gonna take it somewhere in the middle. I still have to build a deck yet. We'll figure it out. We need a team name who has a great name. Our team name is, I think Pants came up with this. Uh, I'm not going to say it all right, but it's like those who do do, those who can't commentate, um, which is the three of us. It's like uh, a Crank, then Pants, and me, which is great. I am beat. Long day at work. I'm weary. Hey, well, and take a seat. Enjoy. We at least got some Neverner to talk about. Hopefully you're doing better. We're getting some rest. This tournament is going to be wild. Now, chronologically, something should be inserted here, if I'm not mistaken, but it's at the bottom because it's a side event. What is this? What is this? Non NSG event hosted by Eric Keelback, aka Whiteblade 111, aka Internet Villain. We do not know Eric's requirements for participation. We assume he will allow open entry, but we'll direct you to him on the day just in case. This event will have a sign up sheet in the check in desk and will run 30 minutes after the conclusion of Crown of Servers. This is a team trivia event, pub trivia style. Join up in a team of three, maybe get your, King of, your Crown of Service tournament uh, to join, and collectively try and answer questions relating to Netrunner cards, lore, and even past tournaments. The team who has the most correct questions at the end of the event wins prizes to spread amongst their team. Worlds doesn't matter anymore. If I don't win Eric's trivia, I'm going to be absolutely gutted. This is what I'm studying for. I'm going to just sleeve up some random cards I net decked off of Jinteki.net. I'm not going to play them because all the time that I could be playing those and learning those decks is going into grinding for this event. I'm winning this. I'm coming for you. I'm so stoked about this. I, I'm, uh, I like pub trivia. Um, it's great. You found a card with dice? What did you find? Who's going to commentate Crown of Service? Sophie, it's actually a good question because I don't know. Uh, because Pants and I, who are doing the majority of casting, are, and I think other people might jump in. Again, I'm not production, I'm just talent, so I don't make these decisions at all. Uh, I, I know they're still looking for people to, to, to commentate. Donut to Gains is playing in the park on dice? Donut is, I thought he was playing dominoes. Okay. You could say that's a dice, but he's probably playing like Go. Or whatever Shogi is. Shogun? Sh Shog Best of luck to casters. Thank you, Sophie. Team Kickflip Skate Tricks. I've gotten a taste of the questions. He put some very good energy. This is going to be great. Okay, Co Cody, hear me out. Email me the questions. Because I'm going to need all, <laughs> all I need. Uh, ju judge team if all else fails. Oh, the judge team will cast? Really cool. Flavor text says backgammon. Okay, read the card. Okay, hold on. You can find Donut in the Park on Thursdays playing Backgammon. Backgammon is a dice game. Backgammon is a dice game. Okay. There's a dice in here. There's cups of dice, but... Read the card. A cup of coffee and a donut. He buys a seat in the backgammon table. Okay, okay, you win. Yeah, there's dice in that, but like... Was that what we really wanted? Is he holding a dice? No, no, he's holding, he's definitely holding whatever the piece in backgammon called is called. A checker's pawn, I reckon, is what they call it in backgammon. Whatever. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I, I I don't know why I'm getting so combative about this. You found somebody with dice, and actually I'm so surprised it's only one person. Because if you search dice, that doesn't work. If you search backgammon, that obviously doesn't work. And then I want to see what Lucky Charm looks like. The dice and backgammon are only for keeping score? What? Really? I thought you rolled them and then you moved as many chips as you rolled. Yeah, it's a rolling move, right? Backgammon was the original rolling, right? <laughs> yeah, there's no way. That can't be right. Imagine using this card as your dice bit. No, I went for Miss Bones, which I hope that connects. But I, I would have been happy to use Donut. Okay, uh, where were we? We were... Oh, boy. Oh, uh, we were here? Okay, anyways, all days, October 7th and 9th, gunslinging. If you can find a, a null signal staff 
I'm getting there. Uh, you can uh, challenge them, and if you win and you can call a judge, you can get some prize support. That's amazing. Also, there's side events. There's a lot of pods. Find out. You can run your own pod. You can go up to organized play and be like, hey, I have like six people. We want to do a, a startup or an eternal tournament or whatever. They'll give you prize support. That's fantastic. And then, of course, all the other stuff is the normal stuff. Standard is going to be on the Saturday from 10 a.m. This is all Toronto time, so Eastern. That's like minus five, I think. Uh, there's a lunch break, and then it ends at 9 p.m. on um saturday so it's gonna be a late dinner that's for sure and then on the finals day registrations in the morning and then it should end around uh oh, that startup wow okay day three so this is the world championship for standard it starts at 10 registration at 9 and it ends around 6 30 and i mentioned this before this is super important between 6 30 after the standard world championship ends the uh null signal is going to try and also stream the startup uh, championship. So while you're going to be missing the majority of the startup Swiss rounds, you're probably going to get the top tables and the finals at the end. So if you're just watching and you don't know what standard is and you don't care about standards, just tune in later. You'll see startup, but do watch standard. It's going to be fun. That's it. I might be running an arts and crafts event at the merch table. Dan, really? That's really cool. Head empty there, there for moving. Oh, it's okay, Sophie. No, no, it's okay. It's good. I feel bad. I, I see. I say wrong things all the time. It's, it's fine. You, you've you what you did was strategic. What you should do a lot of times making Internet content is you just say something wrong and then people engage and then you get good engagement scores and, and uh, channel go up. Playful AI for an ONR card with dice. Oh, ONR. I would believe it. ONR dice seems like really on style for for classic ONR. Lucky chart with that construct. I'm a backgammon player and can explain to you how the doubling die works. So I'm qualified to say that. Yes, you do roll dice to move. No, 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 no. Sophie, don't worry. We need a card out where you have a bunch of corpus playing a game of Monopoly. I'm convinced that Dan D'Argenio is playing uh, cards against humanity for better or worse here. There's no way that this is any other card game besides cards against humanity. That's a bit weird. I've used to play with my dad since he loved it. If I just blanked on the roll to move, just went to the dice keeping score. Oh, that's all good. Will they announce where the 2023 champs will be held? Hey, Joe, how's it going? They have announced, I, f I think, officially that the 2023 World Championships should be in Europe. I know somebody responded on Reddit saying that it'll be in Berlin specifically, but then uh, Nise, uh, no signal said uh, at that point, no, we haven't confirmed that, but Europe is where it's going to be look like, uh, what it's going to look like. And that's the thing. Classically, all the FFG World Championships were in Minnesota, which is not easy for a lot of people in the world. So uh, no signal wants to move around the world championships constantly throughout uh, the world. So it's not always in one place. We've been on Toronto for three years because we haven't had it yet. We've just been on team Toronto, but um, yeah. It should be in Europe. I would love it in Berlin. Yeah, I would love it in Europe. I'd try my hardest to go for sure. Uh, and if it's in Europe, that's good. I've, I think I've been to Berlin, but I was a kid. If any started players want to do commentary for finals, get in touch. Save me from my poor planning. Yeah, uh, that'd be cool. Feeling like Netrunner art car with cards in the picture is a great trivia question. I asked this to like uh, the Patreon crowd whether they want Netrunner trivia, and like some people were into it. It wasn't like the prevailing uh, answer, but I. I don't know if you all know what Only Connect is. I've been really into Only Connect recently, which is a, a quiz show uh, hosted by Victoria Mitchell Corin or Corin Mitchell, excuse me. And it's uh, the the driest British quiz show ever. I, I, I'm i like, you can find it on YouTube. I'm a bit nervous of just straight up playing it on this channel, but it's basically two, three teams of three and they get asked like pretty difficult questions, kind of a mixture of pub trivia and then like cryptic crossword where it's like you, you have to kind of do out of the box thinking, lateral thinking sometimes to get to answers where they're like, they they ask the questions in a really messed up way. We need to do a Netrunner Taskmaster. That's a lot harder, I think. I think that's way harder to, to get a Taskmaster done because it's like playing and building. But I only connect and someone did this. Someone did post an only connect uh, on a, on a, a Netrunner only connect recently, but it's great. So one thing they often do is they present this thing called a wall. And this wall has like 16 words on it. Uh, I think it's usually words. And then you have to figure out that there's four groups where these words come together. Sorry, that's awful quality. But these four words all can be connected. Uh, basically, out of the 16 words, there are four separate groups of four words each. And there's always red herrings, so there'll be some words that you think, oh, these should work together, but there's only one final way to get all of these 16 things into four distinct groups that have, like, 
uh, prevailing uh, logic to them. So if we look at this really quickly, it's love, ace, crab, puck, squash, ball, deuce, goose, egg, cowboy. You might look at these and be like, okay, we're going to try, I don't know, puck, goose, egg, squash, ball, uh, elastic band. Those are like circular things. And then if you commit to that, you realize that you can't solve the puzzle because that doesn't make sense. So it's really difficult. When you're playing on the show, you can guess the thing. It'll tell you if you're right, which helps a, a, a lot. But um, find only connect. It's just kind of difficult if you're not from the UK because like 60% of the questions require UK knowledge. And I don't know anything about the highways in the United Kingdom. So build the deck without using Sure Gamble Hedge Fund. You have until Worlds. Your time starts now. Church, that's actually pretty easy. There's a lot of decks. Honestly, there's some decks that almost won Worlds without those. You'd be surprised. There's a lot of decks that almost won Worlds without Sure Gamble Hedge Fund. Uh, just about all the old Geist decks, classically. Uh, controlling the Message decks did not play Hedge Fund. A lot of the Asset decks didn't. Zip, Gusek, Nil, and Love all mean zero. Max Heal, firstly, you're nailing it, and that's probably the thing, but that might be wrong. You wouldn't know until you do all the other ones, but I think that's exactly it. And a lot of times you'll see it where it's like, oh, you can take all these words and put something in front of it or after it, or like, this is an anagram, or this sounds like something, or these are all the last names of people. It's great. Aesop's Haley, yeah, some of the Aesop's Haley's did not play Sure Gamble. I go grab a drink, return to some old UK game show. It's it's modern. For what it looks like, it looks old, but it is it is on television now. They're on like Series 17. I'm terrible on Patreon, but I'd love some network trippy. We'll get to it. I just think there's other things we need to do first. Ian, one of my favorite only connect bits is the missing vowel round. Oh man, this is so fun. The missing vowel round is the end of only connect. We'll get back to Netrunner in a second. Only connect missing vowels. I want to do this for Netrunner so hard, but the short idea is uh, freepubquiz.co.uk. They'll give you a category and then they'll show the answer, but the answer will only have uh, the missing vowels. And you have to do this as quickly as possible uh, before the other team buzzes in. I'm way better at this than any of the other parts of the show. And I'm, I know on the show, it's like harder to see cause it's a bit further away, but like, I feel like sometimes I could do this, right? So this is missing vowels quiz. Maybe you see it on only connect, just add the missing vowels. So these are all money proverbs. So money, uh, is, I saw the answer is the root of all evil. Um, okay. What is this? Wow. Um, gadgets, baby monitor. Oh, the pressure's really on. I don't know. Kodak brown camera, is that a thing? Brownie camera, apparently? Amazon Alexa, that, when it starts with a vowel, it gets hard. But you see, this is, this is what we do, what we eat dinner, we play Only Connect. That could be your team name, no vowels. It's on series 17 and it's not old, doesn't match up. Well, like they're doing it moderately. You're right, it's, it's technically old. I see what you mean. One of my favorite deck names was who or what is hedge fund? The deck didn't run hedge fund, believe it or not. Sometimes you just forget. I, I I was playing a Titan deck at the last Worlds I played at that I didn't have Hedge Fund in it. Yeah, you can do it. Brownie was a type of camera. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah, you have to do it like that, Crow. I think that's nice. Okay, let's get some physical challenges. Let's throw some cards and make some Art of Famous decks. I got to review the deck list. I'm, I'm not going to lose the trivia. This is, I think, where we're going to get back to Neverner really quickly and not watch me struggle at the no vowels round. But that's the news. There's a lot of news going on. And again, if you want to watch the streams, they will be on basically all the time, starting a Friday with the uh, Crown of Servers tournament, going all the way to Saturday to Sunday. So you can watch it all here. And it's no longer uh, Project Nisei. It's twitch.tv slash null signal Netrunner. So again, link in the description. But I implore you to go here and then just hit the follow button. But more importantly, hit the bell. Uh, I have it on, but if you hit this bell, you have notifications and then you will get a push notification when they go live. Cause when are they going to go live around 10 o'clock Eastern, but who knows? So you want to be there for sure. Cool. All right. I want to talk about the meta. I don't know how to do this. Is there a good website where we can put together like easy free flow graphs? Because I think like one of the big questions right now is it's a bit quiet out here, right? Like everybody is putting their decks and playing them in private. A lot of people aren't posting deck lists because they're testing. And so the question is, what is good? And an easy way to find that is just to spectate JNet lobbies. I think that's for sure. Um, but uh, the question is like, what sort of archetypes do you think you have to worry about yourself and how to play into them and how to play around them? So I want to take some time here. Firstly, at any point in time, you know how this works. I get derailed. Do ask questions in chat. If you have a specific question about a matchup, how things work, what you think about this, let me know. Because I want to take like the next hour and a half to basically go over what we think we're going to see there, what sort of archetypes you have to play around and that sort of thing. So don't, don't uh, be hesitant. Play the heart deck, it's hilarious. No joke. So Cody, who might be in chat now, sent me this heart deck because it was something that they played or were gonna play at Canadian National. He's like, you gotta see this because it is very genuinely funny. Um, and probably not awful. 
And I was like, I'm going to play this on channel, but we wanted to line it up when he wanted to post it before Worlds, and I never got around to it. And then he's posted it, which is totally fine. But I think it's a really interesting deck. It's it's a bit fiddly. The interaction here, and I was going to play this. If he did not post it, I would have played this at, at Crown of Servers, um, is that the idea is a reconstruction contract is very interesting as a one cost. You can trash an instant speed. And if this has advances on it, which is the problem right now, <laughs> Cody says OP ban in chat. If this had counters on it, at instant speed, you can trash this thing, and then you can order your triggers. Now, when you trash this, as long as you have a card on the table that can be advanced, uh, you can go and do your op trigger first to go get something like a zero cost or like cerebral overrider. And then once that's on the table, finish the, uh, the actual ability of this, which allows you to move the counters from the reconstruction contract onto the new overrider. So as long as the corporation has three credits, four credits, they need to res this. I, uh, they can, after you've committed to access, they can make a cerebral overrider appear out of nowhere. Is that good? Kind of. It's really trick. It's a, it's a really tricky, uh, specifically because you cannot get advancements on reconstruction contract very easily. There's very few ways in the game to get advancements on this because this card inherently cannot be advanced while it can hold advancement counters. So this deck is on three seamless launch and you largely need a seamless launch this thing to get advancements on it, but you can only do that on a turn after it's been on the table for a turn. So there are windows in which the runner can interact and the one Lacosta grid. Is he saying big deal can put counters? Yeah, big deal can put on counters, but it's five influence and 17 credits, but it's one of the few cards. There are a bunch of other interesting niche cards that can put counters on the reconstruction contract. Like uh, I think uh, market research or what's it called? Market fo focus group, I think can do it. There's like one or two other ones, but they're generally like way too expensive and not very good. Uh, Kakurenbu could do it. I uh, Mitosis could do it. But like you still at the end of the day need to get this to six counters because you might be wondering, like, what's the point? Why are we doing this? If you can get the reconstruction contract to six counters, the runner has to run it because if they don't run it at instant speed, you trash this at your start of turn trigger to put all those advancements on a clearing house and then they die to six meat damage. So that's a problem. Red Planet Couriers, Courier, uh, Red Planet Couriers. Yo, Pincel, how's it going? Red Planet Couriers says to an advanced card. It was something that Cody looked into and actually derailed the deck immediately uh, because it says install a card that can be advanced. So it's, one, there, you have to like, there's very specifically very few cards that can put advancements on this. Like Trickle Light needs to be advanced card. Uh, Psychographics needs to be advanced card. There's just so many cards that are very specific where they can advance. Yeah. Yeah, Trick says a card that can be advanced, yeah. It's not ordering triggers, they're distinct things. Oh, because you pay the cost and then you get the effect. Yeah, so it's not ordering your triggers. You're totally right. It just it has to happen in that order because you pay the cost, then that's when you opt, but then you get the result. Yeah. Yeah, mitosis doesn't care. Um, focus group doesn't care. Uh, it's really weird, the niche things that don't care. I feel like there's another one that doesn't care, but it's like way too expensive. Kakarenbo doesn't care. D Daruma doesn't work because Daruma lets them jack out. And like at that point, they're going to jack out. So it doesn't really do anything. Yeah, I don't know. I really wanted to play this list. The fact that it's now open so people know what it is and can play around it. I still think this deck potentially could be quite strong. And there's some other versions I've been thinking of and I've been messaging Cody. But then the biggest issue is that I've realized this needs to have advancements on it. If I could trash this without advancements on it, I would be really excited. But it needs to have at least one advancement. Otherwise, you're not actually changing the board state. So sorry you ruined it. No, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. It's not about winning. It's collecting all the silly niche rules. Yeah, there's like really cool things you can do with this. Like as you have into reconstruction contract, you can like get some pretty wild tempo on it uh, in theory. You just can't really do much with it on the same turn. Anywho, this is the coolest, but I don't know. You might see this at some point. It's really funny. Okay, but I want to talk about the sort of lists and archetypes that we you think you need to play around to talk about that. I don't know how many of y'all have figured out your deck lists. On top of that, always be running shows the tournaments that are coming up. And there's some big tournaments coming up recently uh, in the near future. Uh, this weekend, I think there's a fair bit. If you go to upcoming, I think there's like a Polish Nationals. I think there's a big event in America too. Uh, oh, there's a Spanish national. So you'll see there. There's already 22 people registered there. There's a Polish nationals. South Sand Sands having a store champ. So you know, stay tuned here. You'll see what people are doing. And this will be in the, you know, the 9.22 meta. So you can actually like straight deck. You can straight uh, net deck if you want to. Uh, otherwise, this is auto standard tournament here. No big surprises. I'm always looking at these top tables to see what happens. So low parent handy taking first and second. Fantastic. Uh, this is very similar lists. So Loper is the Canadian national champion in 2015. He knocked me out. That's fine. Uh, and this is basically the list we played today. But the big change is they're on two boom and they drop the all seeing eye for a third hard hitting news, which makes a lot of sense. If you want to play, um, you know, hard hitting news, if you want to get a lot of tags to win the game, having a third hard hitting news is pretty impactful. But this is the sort of list now. 
when we want to talk about this list, you saw us play it. And I think the freedom matchup is actually one of the more difficult matchups. We'll see how big of a deal, because this matchup does not really Malia Zaloka. So if you're a criminal, you have access to like, probably want to play two Miss Bones. The big question is like to figure out how much of the meta is going to be assets. And the fact that we got a big ban list update before Worlds means you're to some extent not going to know what's going to be a world it's just going to take like one big testing group like the snare bearers or new world order to come up with one list and then like seven of the players are playing the same list to figure out whether it's going to be an acid matchup or not so i don't know i would definitely at least play one miss bones in my uh, criminal deck going forward probably still two because i think it's way too good in too many matchups to not want to play it it doesn't really cost a lot it's still a pretty fine card even in the, the matchups where it's not very good and we aren't coming to worlds oh no way i didn't know that oh that's a bummer well, now it's it's easier for for us to win, I guess. <laughs> um, in this list, you saw some of the issues. Uh, this is a Drago list, and I think you're seeing more and more uh, runners tech into this thing. Maybe they spent a lot of week playing against this deck list the week, so you know how to deal with it. And I think there's certain tech cards you can play into this if you really want to. I think Citadel Sanctuary is obviously quite important. This is a very easy. I'm just gonna stop there. Uh, this is a, I did it wrong. Uh, this is a very easy card to include to your deck, and it's just a very flexible kind of off button to a lot of issues. This card specifically allows you to dodge meat damage, and mind you, trashing your grip is a really big cost, but if you survive, that's good enough. But on top of this, this allows you to remove tags clicklessly. Specifically, if you're playing lat with a link, I could see metas where this shows up. I think another big ones that are coming in are No One Home is seeing play, and this is fantastic. This allows you to largely duck underneath one of those heart hitting news specifically you are going to still need a modicum of credits to get this trace to fire again but this is also a really good card into the detecti matchups where you don't have to fire it until some sort of net damage is presenting lethal out of nowhere and that's important this is one inclusion or one influence zero cost inclusion which is really nice and i think another one we're going to see actually a fair bit of worlds is not no one home but no free lunch with the chances of seeing another game before i have to pass out uh medium to low if anything we're going to play the heart the broken heart deck but i just want to go through this Good night, I'm talking about Brazil. Tarlian, how's it going? I'm not sure, I understand. I disagree with Citadel because as Corp, you're gonna use it to vamp the runner and trigger bladder word again. Oh, in that matchup, yeah, I guess you could, but like, I feel like if they have a Citadel and your bladder words are on the table, I don't know how long they're gonna stick for. But yeah, yeah it's technically a window to duck bladder word. I think that's totally true. I think you're gonna see a fair bit of this card. Uh, if economies are a bit more uh, less robust, uh, you need to protect your, you know, that single tag for the Drago can be meaningful if it's returning that endurance to hand. So a card like No Free Lunch is like the most elegant way around it. And it's also not a dead card in most other matchups where you can crack this for three credits at instant speed. I think that's good. They have Citadel, you won't have Bladder Words. Yeah, that's the way I see it. I think that works like that. And the big thing to talk about these sort of decks, like these sort of acid lists, and they were doing good classically into um, the last couple of weeks that we saw, like we saw the Obelisk do really well, is that Pad Tap? Not being there, Pantap was actually one of the biggest burdens to some of these acid based lists. Because these acid based lists, if you put a pad tap in the early game, they understood that your assets are now working for the runner. And as a corporation, spending a click and three credits to take down the pad tap puts you inherently behind on the table. And a lot of these lists were the decks that want to put out enough assets on the table. So that's hard for you to keep up and trash them while at the same time the corporation's getting value. And if you step out of line and you know the, the economy doesn't line up, you have the hard hitting news. And I feel like the loss of Rezeki to some extent, but also Patab, which is a sooner card to pay off, uh, does help a lot in these matchups. I think the big question mark for me is wondering whether they're controlling the message matchup, which, mind you, if you're playing Amakua, 419, you have Link, you have Miss Bones, you have Citadel Sanctuary, and I don't know how popular 419 is going to be, whether that makes the matchup a whole much fair bit rougher. I think we did play the asset matchup into 419 last week, and we prevented expose on too many of our cards, and that actually cost us three or four credits in the early game where if we had more money, we would have a chance of leveraging the hard hitting news. So I think you have to also just reveal to them to some extent what some of the cards are installed. And if we want to transition to 419, I think a big thing you are going to see, especially because Criminal seems a bit stronger right now, uh, is Amakua. And Criminal lost some of their good cards. Losing Rezeki, losing Pad Tab is a, a big deal for Criminal. I think you're still going to see Tapworm a fair bit, and I think Tapworm is quite good. I, I think most criminal lists, if they're not playing Amaku, they should probably consider Tapworm just because if the core purges this, that's good for you. And this is just good clickless economy for a deck that just lost a lot of its clickless economy. And I think this is phenomenal. But I think one of the biggest things is like, if I'm building a corp deck right now, I'm trying to look at the meta and I'm trying to decide like which tech cards I think are gonna line up to the meta. And I think there's some really easy ones that you can quickly include to any deck for small influences that I think are gonna be very important to address certain things that I have no doubt we're gonna see at world's top tables. Firstly, it's my virus. I think I want to play almost Tomb of Virus in just about any list I'm playing. 
one at a minimum, maybe two is a bit too much because this now costs influence the way that Cyberdex Fire Suite. But if you're playing into an Amakua, and specifically if you have the ice for this to matter, this can have a huge blowout if the runner or the corporation, no, the runner is expecting to use their Amakua. At instant speed, you can purge, and that's very, very, very important. Um, otherwise, in terms of like fast advance lists, you're going to want to run this for sure. The net damage on this isn't very relevant, but you're going to expect some Amakua. On top of that, if you do see freedom, that's quite good. You can have these like large blowouts where they lose a lot of economy, they lose an imp token, stuff like that. Um, and I do think you're going to see freedom in top tables. I, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd play a corp deck without a single copy of my virus. On top of that, IP block. This is one of the other like really small influence cards that you want to consider. On its own, it's a three credit break or face check for most runners. That's really fine for a two credit cost card. Um, and on top of that, it has the, um, the ability to tax out Amakua's. Again, there's not that many AIs we're seeing play right now, modernly, besides the Yamakua. And, you know, if you're playing into Criminals, this is pretty good. But in some of the other matchups, this is not the worst. Unfortunately, into Lat, they have one link already, so this is a two-credit break. But this is something that you would probably want to consider if you're expecting there to be a fair bit of Criminal. And the problem is, we haven't seen. I don't know enough if Criminal is going to be the best thing to play. Because that's the thing. A lot of testing groups, they find what the best thing is, and they play that. So, again, in Swiss rounds, it's a different question. But if you go to the top tables and you're not seeing any Yamakua, you're going to be regretting this, that's for sure. Hey, Steven, total tangent, but hey, loved your world's video. Cheers, this is my first world and it was super helpful, reassuring. I'm really glad to hear that. I, I know I shared that uh, with our the Montreal crew and a fair few people said like they learned something from it, but I appreciate it, man. I'm excited that a bunch of us are, are gonna be down there. If they have Citadel, sorry, we need a world's bingo sheet with a square saying Mavirus flatline. <laughs> I would not bet on that on that sheet, that's for sure. I think one of the last two cards I think are very worth considering if you're putting a list together for one influence is Chrisium Grid. Uh, Chrism Grid is just massively important. One of the best archetypes right now, and it's a very flexible archetype that answers a lot of the field, is Apocalypse. And I, just about everyone can play Apocalypse pretty well. We see Apocalypse Lat probably being one of the best decks in the format right now. And it has a really good way to deal with so many of these decks. All the prison decks, mind you, you have to worry about those bladderworts because the damage can take the Apocalypse out of hands. Criminals can play the Apocalypse, whether you want to play Sable or just play 419. It's, it's a bit harder. I wouldn't expect the Apocalypse in a lot of Criminals. But then, of course, Anarchs have been playing Apocalypse forever. And I think this is just such a hard card to play around. And modernly in a format that still corporations feel like they have to go quite fast, it's hard for them to do their thing in the remote server. And with cards like Endurance uh, that generally are pretty good at running the, the remote server at least once or twice very cheaply, that's where a lot of times where your defensive upgrades have to go if you want to score agendas. And if that's where they're going, your central servers are a bit softer. So for that reason, Apocalypse can land pretty, pretty well. I think Chrisium is probably something you want to consider. I, I don't know how many triggers this is going to eat because, mind you, it stops runs from being considered successful. And if you're playing that just to stop Apocalypse, I think that's very important for one influence. On top of that, of course, it ducks things like Diversion of Funds out of Criminal. That's going to be important. But I don't see too many cards like Jailbreak or, or Maker's Eye or stuff like that, like big multi-access. It generally comes in with stuff like, I guess, Stargate matters, right? Like, it does stop Stargate, and that's important. But it's just a good card. Generally, you pay three, they pay five, so you're kind of ahead on it. Three can be expensive on some board states, but it's another card I would definitely consider one of in my list. And I think the last thing I would consider as a one of influence slot for a tech card is Magnet. It's a three cost in the run code game for three strength. That's not bad. That's not bad numbers. But the big text here is when you res this, you can like host a program that's hosted on an ice on it and blank it. And this card we saw be very impactful, specifically in the finals of Euro Africa Continentals, where we saw a Hoshiko deck that was playing Endurance, and then it needs Botulus to be able to deal with some of the ice that it doesn't want Endurance through, and then it has ice destruction with cards like Hippo. Um, I, I think that's important. I, I think that's really important to have this card. The big question is how much Botulus you're going to see. I think if you're going to see Endurance Anarch, and maybe not Freedom, I, we didn't see Botulus and Freedom, but I think you're going to see Endurance Freedom. This is a pretty relevant tech card in, in some matchups. I think there's some some factions where you might want to consider putting this in your deck because as long as you have other ways to tax out like Endurance and Botulus, generally high subroutine ice, that matters, but this is not a bad include. Conduit? I honestly don't know. Like Conduit, yeah, Chrisium Grid stops Conduit. But I'm not convinced we're going to see that much Conduit. I think Conduit was really powerful maybe for the last month or so. And we haven't seen a lot of it. But I do think now with 419 and Amakua, more decks are going to be running uh, one Mavirus or not. And having a Mavirus in your list is like... Having two Mavirus in your list means the Conduit is actually kind of unreliable. So you have to watch out for that for sure. But I feel like going into this meta, I'd be less excited to run Conduit than some of the other options for sure. Uh, just because of the Mavirus th thing. 
Is there anything else I'm missing? Is there any other tech cards y'all are like really excited to play into your decks? I don't. Maybe some people are like just a bit cagey to talk about the stuff that they're brewing on it because obviously secrecy. I just want to make it like obvious for like maybe players who are going to the first world, just some things that they might want to consider when deck building. Uh, because again, we don't exactly know what the meta is. But if I was talking about like the top decks, like yeah, the currently the message deck looks good. I do think you can tech into it and that actually can help a lot. Apocalypse is pretty good. Yeah, Pinsel, we mentioned no free lunch. I think no free lunch is really important. And I think you're gonna start seeing that in some of the like the more basic like uh, lat decks. <laughs> Rococo. Combo ob. I don't know what combo ob is. So this deck list here is, is credited as uh, the uh, Pincel's op list and I like this a fair bit. I think one of the matchups I played into Clem uh, on the last video we put up for a deck dive was playing something very similar to this, if not this. I like this deck a lot, and I'm actually leaning towards playing this at the service tournament. Maybe I shouldn't say that up front. I think there's some changes you can make to it for sure, and I think in the uh, right up here, uh, Ryan talks about some changes. But I, I like this sort of list because it allows me to have a lot of creator, creative expression of play, but also just runs a bunch of the tech cards, right? Like it has access to Mavirus and, and Chrysium Grid, and you can use them easier in this deck where you can pull them when you need them. And I just kind of like that, specifically into Crown of Service tournament, which is a tournament where you're going to be playing against most factions. It's the one tournament that has the most diverse meta because people are forced to play every single different faction i value a deck like this that's actually very flexible um so i'm probably gonna play this but again i'm not playing world so i don't have to win anything will there be deck without endurance yeah Darjean, i think there will be decks without endurance i think there's some good reasons too i think some of the criminal lists are actually better without endurance um there are some good criminal endurance lists sock has played some recently on stream but i do think like penny shaver is just still a heck of a card specifically if you're expecting to be a lot of assets like this is probably worth it um, I do think if you see freedom, you could see freedom without endurance. You'll probably see freedom with endurance, but uh, there will be some for sure. I, I think there's a chance also, I don't know, it seems really hard whether you want to consider playing Adam, uh, just like the brain chip Adam, a, a brain cage, brain chip Adam, the sort of one that like um, Kahuito was playing. Admittedly, though, that lost all its drip economy. I, I feel like the mini factions might be in a bad spot. Hey, Kesley, how's it going? I had a hunting grants to tech against Funhouse IP block, but I took it out when I did so little against anyone else. Yeah, this is not one of the metas that I would consider playing, Um, uh, what's it called? But that's exactly it. Like, that's one of those, like, one influence tech cards you can consider. Hunting Grounds is really good in a meta where there's a lot of ice that have on encounter. Currently, IP block is relevant if you're playing Amakua, it gets around the tag. But I think more often than not, a lot of those lists that are running Amakua and worried about IP block, which is, I think, the most common on encounter ice in, in the modern meta, at least... Yeah, probably across decks in NBN, you have a lot more is that that's the sort of matchup where you're more likely to run Citadel Sanctuary because that just kind of helps. It doesn't solve it, but it helps in a bit more flexible way. I'm going to force Biotic Bass combo op. It's more of call on people over teching for R+. What does it do, Sengren? Does it actually kill or is it just like it's just mad boom? But at that point, you get around no free lunch. I, I, I need to know that deck a bit more. Arc Lockdown. Arc Lockdown, I think, is like, OK. The problem is like Arc Lockdown right now, I don't think is as impactful as it used to be because a lot of the Anarchs right now are running Breakers, of course, but they're also running Endurance. They're also running some of the Boomerang. A lot of them are running Botulus. So like targeting a single Breaker doesn't often like solve the game. I think Arc Lockdown, if it's going to show up, it's going to show up in the decks that like want to deal with Clot. Um, that's more likely. I, I don't think Arc Lockdown is actually in the best spot it's been. When you're seeing like Max decks that were milling themselves and you could snipe cards out before they had the chance to recur them, then I'd be on, on, on board. But I don't think there's that much that you're like really excited to Arc Lockdown. Adam's in a terrible spot with that drip. Yeah, I kind of feel that way. The best way to be R plus is no free lunch and have crap loads of money, but there will be decks with, without endurance because you bounce them. <laughs> yeah, I, I do think this card is going to be very important. I think there is like the boogeyman in the room, which is, you know, Drago and R plus and, and CTM. And this is good against CTM because it doesn't dodge the tag. It removes the tag, which is important. But like having this in your back pocket, like for very little cost and very little influence does give you some breathing room. I think the sort of um, what's it called lists, uh, the lat lists you're seeing in startup are like pretty happy playing two of these, if not one. One, if not two. Let's say it like that. Think you would consider your breakers and DJ Fender Steve recursions really good. I don't think so. I I really don't think like so arc locking down a single card to stop DJ uh to stop uh Steve recursion doesn't really do much. Like that's a pretty low tempo play. But say they have three diversion of funds. How many diversion of funds can they play on you? At most five. So it stops like I guess two of them, maybe. I don't know. I, I definitely wouldn't spend influence on this. Maybe if I'm in faction, but even then, right? Like you're just trying to win before Steve is a problem. Like if Steve is hitting HQ so much that Steve is an issue, I feel like you have other structural problems maybe. 
Hatchet job is two votes to answer to boat sometimes. Yeah. So there's like a lot of like really, if you're like really teched into a boat meta and there's a big chance that like somewhere in a testing group, someone's figured out something that is good in a meta where the meta is unkind to boat. I, I think that's worth considering, but there are actually a fair few cards that are like inherently just good enough into a boat meta. And specifically now the boat meta is going to be different than the boat meta we saw continentals because the boat meta continentals is people had endurance, but people also had uh, just like, again, a boatload of, of economy over time. And so now there's going to be, I think, a bit more pronounced windows in terms of like when people have economy, when people don't have economy, because once you're installing your boat, you're not getting your Rezekis. It's still going to have good econ, but it's it's going to be a bit different. So Hatchet Job, in theory, is two clicks to bounce a boat to hand. Of course, trashable, um, but, you know, a bit different. Uh, we were looking today at Threat Assessment, which, of course, they go tag me as a dead card, but I honestly don't mind this card. Uh, you can play this pretty easily in, in, in controlling a message in NBN, and if you, they have a boat or an Amaku with virus counters on it, it just returns to the top of their deck because they can't take two tags. If they take two tags, you hit them with the punishment, let alone boom. Like this card sees no play. And uh, I don't know, uh, but I, I feel like this is maybe just good enough. Um, it's it's one cost, like one cost for return to top of the deck is fine. I agree, but it's a good card. People always don't remember. Yeah, it's also the sort of thing like where you get burned to like losing your two paper clips or your one paper clip in criminal to an arc lockdown. And then like you just pre-install your paper clip. So it's a mixed bag for sure. But I, I don't think I wouldn't say arc lockdown. We're in arc lockdown meta. Exactly. Reverse accounts without drip. It can hurt a lot. Yes and no. Right. Like, okay. So I feel like reverse accounts a lot of times takes up the slot of just about any other card you could play, right? Like you're in a situation where you could do install advance advance. And if they don't run it, you could have scored an agenda won the game. You're totally right. Like them losing 12 credits, that is meaningful in the game, but in so many circumstances, I feel like if you can protect the reversed accounts to take 12 credits out of them, you probably would be closer to winning the game. Or if they ran it anyways, you could have had an NGO front or anything else. So yeah, uh, it's a it's a mixed bag. But uh, well, reverse accounts is not a card that people play around at high tables, and I think that could be interesting. Wake up call, yeah, Stephen. Wake up call is seeing play. You're seeing some of the Wayland Acid decks uh, play three copies of Wake Up Call, and you're actually seeing some of the top table runners, specifically with open deck lists, playing around this, where they will see some cards at the top of the deck that they would consider trashing, but they don't trash because they know you have a Wake Up Call in hand. It's definitely good. It's definitely good. It's, again, pretty easy to play. For one credit, they can probably don't want to lose the cards in hand. A lot of the cards they have in hand, mind you, are very important cards like Mad Dash that actually have a very meaningful impact. I know Lopera specifically was playing two Mad Dash, and we did see that at the end of Intercontinentals. I think two Mad Dash might not be wrong, uh, especially if you want to close the game sooner than later. I felt great with Wake Up Call, but the same feels arc you described. I think Wake Up Call, though, is like a bit more flexible because just about any board state, this is relevant. There are much fewer board states. There's entire matchups where our lockdown doesn't do anything. But like, if you're playing a acid deck, they can't trash this. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. We talked about freedom. I think freedom is going to be well played. Again, I'm not that. I usually don't call shots like this uh, because I know there's people going to be testing and people are going to come out with some wild deck you're not expecting. Like that's the thing is like trying to figure out what op can do when you're sitting against an op matchup. There, I've no doubt there's incredibly com competent and uh, incredibly co uh, competitive op lists uh, that are brewing somewhere in the distance. But I think freedom is probably in a really good spot. You have a strange economy engine. It's a bit different, but this wasn't the sort of deck that classically played pad taps and Rezekis, and it was a fine economy engine. And freedom's ability is really flexible. It's really good against asset decks. A lot of the op lists are playing two coster, one cost, zero coster. It's no different with controlling the message. And then on top of that, you have good disruption into things like sports metal. And uh, I feel, I worry, I don't know how your matchup into like um, full glacier is going to go or mid-range glacier. At that point, you do have endurance which hopefully you're playing uh, that costs you the knob curry slot, but maybe it's Friday chips that take that slot. It's, it's kind of interesting, but the sort of list that was like really good a while ago, I think we saw it a bit today. It's still pretty good. Enforcing loyalty is only one influence, but a bit tough in econ. Enforcing loyalty is like, I don't know. This card has been around forever and it's almost never been like pretty competitive. There were like some niche windows where people were playing like a one of really high influence out of faction card. Uh, but like this does nothing into shaper. So like, I don't know. It really does nothing into the lat matchup, and like the lat matchup seems pretty important. It like literally does nothing to the lat matchup. I, I wouldn't play this. It's really expensive. A double with trace three that costs two. Like you're already this is a super low tempo play compared to some of the other ones. Like the reprisals are actually not that low tempo. This is a good card to know that exists. It's like one of those things that you can always solve a problem. The problem is like it, it's it doesn't solve anything elegantly. All right. What about if you're doing your testing gauntlet? What sort of stuff would you need to worry about? So. We can just go through the factions, right? To talk about like the sort of matchups that we expect. Is this useful to anyone? It's helping me as someone who has to cast. 
All right, we can go like this. If we go to corpse standard, we can just roll through all the lists. I'll move my head so you can see the text on the cards. And we can, we can, let's, let's, let's make some bets. How much of the field do we think is going to be each of these identities? There's only like a couple dozen of them. All right, we'll start here. As a group, we're going to see it. We're definitely going to see it. It's good. And we saw a lot of flexible versions of Asa Group in the last uh, month of Continentals. Just the efficiency version, the quote unquote big deal version. Like, okay, yeah, we might see that. You saw people playing around with the ganked Loki version, and that didn't actually like really uh, convert to much success. It didn't make it to top tables, though. I think open deck list doesn't help. But like some of the good players uh, can play around a bit better. Trieste is like, you know, pretty interesting. Can't you see what Bridgman cooks up? Yeah, yeah, uh, Sophie, I'm, I'm, I'm ruined for Bridgman to some extent. Of course, I want a Canadian to win on, on home turf, but uh, yeah. This is great because I was going to make a video this soon. Yeah, you're saying and then you can you can quote this and tell tell me why I'm wrong. I'm more interested in yours. I want to hear other people's thoughts because I know my own thoughts. I think Asa Group is always good. Uh, I don't know if there's any like degenerate combo Asa decks. Like classically, we saw Asa Fast Advance, but like Asa is just a very valuable ability. And there's a chance if the meta wants to go fast to beat out like, classically Rezeki and Endurance, this is a faster ability that forces more things on the table that require Endurance counters. And again, the whole meta might not be Endurance. I think the changes to economy are going to hurt and they're going to make the decks less powerful, but I don't think endurance is less good unless people like this is the big thing for the pivot of this game. It's like there's a big chance that while everyone is on endurance, some people realize that like triple icing all central servers and playing two ice deep remote server on all centrals actually hurts enough into the endurance. I feel like that's still kind of a hard ask because as soon as you see like an anarch with endurance and like APOC, let alone uh, botulus, not botulus, uh, hippo for ice destruction. I feel like that's going to struggle a bit, but we'll see. But there's a chance again, like we, the, the idea is that if you have a meta that you think is like crystallized and you understand like all runners are going to do this, there's so much breathing room to make ridiculously good calls. Soccer for the win. Yeah. Soccer is, is quite well positioned. Asa's tempo and it's never been more important to be fast when the runner just goes sort of loss of a late game insurance. I feel like the late game is probably not as dire as it used to be. Um, you still, uh, you don't exactly see it, but with, like without the late game inevitability of cards like Rezeki and Pantap, I feel like the late game actually might not be that bad. From my limited testing so far, you see lists like criminal lists that outside of their Chezwa, they just do run out of gas. The problem is it's like on turn 12, turn 13, whether you can survive that long is a different question, but I do think that there is actually now an expiration date on most decks, which is fascinating. Architects of Tomorrow. I don't really expect this to do anything. 12 influence is a penalty. A Byroid Ice inherently is a bit of a is a bit of a penalty. We talked about we haven't, but next activation command is like a powerful ability into a meta. We saw that recently. Um, the last like couple months or so. Why does that not work? Oh, it's because I put one too many letters. But this works really well. Deals a boomerang botulist boat, and that's fantastic. And you'd expect it in this sort of deck, but you're seeing it in the more tempo, more aggressive lists. That's the thing that I don't exactly like about Architects is it's actually quite slow. Where are my deck lists? Uh, it's actually quite slow, but there's a chance with the meta that going long might actually matter. AOT knocked me out of the top cut of Continentals. Hey, dear. How was it? What kind of matchup? Are you going to participate in Worlds Tournament? It's me. I'm not actually playing in Standard or Startup Worlds Tournament. I'll be casting it, but I'll be there and I'm going to be playing at the Crown Servers Team Tournament, but like for fun. We're trying to win, I guess. I'd be surprised. Precision design, it's good. You saw the sort of lists that were doing really well. These lists actually can be tuned pretty heavily into endurance meta. The question is, is this list that much better if we're seeing more 419 and criminal? I think that's going to concern the list because I do think the 419 criminal, if it can get up a late state, have a pinhole threading or two and can get all its breakers down, that's not an easy matchup for them. Because uh, once you get Amaku up to five strength, that deck has nothing. Uh, unless they're playing again, they need to play Tomb of Virus. Then run a history question. What stuff like Underworld Context as problematic as Rezeki was? Uh, yes and no. So Underworld Contact is just a, it's a card, it's a resource. That said, you get a credit at the start of your turn as long as you have two links. So firstly, people had to set this up, it was slow. This was like a sick card in like Geist lists or Sunny lists, and it wasn't as problematic. There were decks that played this sort of thing that got to the late game Prison Shaper. I think if you just search Congress, you'll kind of get there. There was this deck list called Congress Kate that was like pretty ridiculous. We have a, uh, a video of, of John on our channel playing it, and he's like 100 plus credits. So yes. The thing is, like, I don't know if it was the best thing to do at the time. Oh, yeah, here you go. I think this was on three Underworld Contacts. Yeah, so this is the exact same thing. It played all the drip you could. Underworld Contacts, data folding, and no joke, this actually played kind of similarly to the sort of lat lists. And while it didn't have, like, the endurance to get through everything, it ran fast events tech, and then it just ran the best breakers. Like, Study Guide was the old hyperbaric, and it had enough money to fund this. And then it just did everything to get to that spot. Of course, back then you had Stim Hack, so you could get your breakers down pretty cheaply. 
Do we ever talk about why it's called Congress? I honestly don't know. Oh yeah, well, now we are. I call this deck Congress because the goal is to get paid an ungodly sum of money for doing absolutely nothing. That's pretty biting, but that's the idea behind it. So sort of, yes. And this deck was pretty good for a while. A lot of people just didn't like to play it, um, but these sort of like put all the drip economy in one deck classically did work out. Like this was running 3x dice and memchip. Like something's wrong. And mind you, you did get Kate at 48 cards. This is, this is wild. The most fun I had with Trieste and Town Cell Trash Boat when the second half of Midnight Sun was great. I was Ace up with the AOT shell, lots of fear from Trieste. I have been saying more that people are playing like, you know, off world offices and architects and going a bit faster. And yeah, it's fine. I don't know if it's better than anything else, but it's fine. The problem is like you need to play some amount of non biro dice. Otherwise, your early game kind of isn't great if people can call the runs well. Mirror Morph. I don't expect to see Mirror Morph unless there's a busted combo we don't know about, but Mirror Morph is just harder to play in a tournament setting, and the payoffs are like not that much better than anything else. I think for Mirror Morph to be competitive, there has to be something that's a bit unfair. Uh, currently, MC Austerity Policy is like the best Mirror Morph card. It's been that case for a long time, but unfortunately with things like Pinhole Threading, which I think you are going to start to actually see Pinhole Threading in decks, uh, it's a fair bit worse. But Sports Metal is good. I think sports metal is a deck that you have to address. I don't think you can play, uh, you can build a runner deck that has like a really bad chance against sports metal and be okay. I think even the lat decks are slowly addressing it. Like now the lat decks are playing a single copy of self-modifying code, which is so important for the list because now self-modifying code and simul chip and then the clot itself are all reasons and ways to stop fast events. The question is whether like the the wild, um, you know, blood in the water, not blood in the water, uh, moon pool versions are like worth uh, considering. But I do think sports metal is good. Does, is sports metal good into criminal? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Is sports metal good into shaper? Not as good. Is sports metal good into anarch? It's not bad. Is sports metal good into freedom? No, not really. Just don't get matched versus sports. Yeah, I don't know. I think also sports a lot of times is like the panic pick. The same way that like Titan Transnational classically was a panic pick where very competitive Netrunner players would go and play sports metal uh, because uh, it sometimes can just cheese games out. Like sometimes you just coast through Swiss and win on turn six every time. So watch out for this thing. And if you if you I'm not going to say not think so much because I think some of the most important decisions in sports metal have a huge impact on the game, but they're very subtle, like when to draw, when to get two credits. Like you get one of those wrong, it can cost you the game. So, yeah, it's good. Uh, Ag Infusion. Yeah, maybe. I think Fusion's ability is like inherently good. Like if you're running three copies of a uh, Nancy and you're worried about endurance, like I think you have something. I think the biggest issue why I would be a bit nervous of playing Agon Fusion is Anarchs with endurance and running Hippo. You can't get you can't get a, a, a Nancy Hippo. And generally, a Jinteki classically can play around Hippo. Hippo, mind you, is a card that says, "Do I have to search the one?" I don't think I do. Um. There's no one in this. I'm thinking of David. Uh, the thing about the hippo classically is that if you break the outermost ice, you trash it. So a lot of people will put, you know, unresed ice as the outermost. But specifically in Ag Infusion, you need your outermost ice to be resed in me. And so it's not going to be great. Ag Infusion is pretty reasonable. I don't know. It's, to me, Sengren, it feels so much like if you're playing into like Endurance Anarch, it might be a nightmare. Admittedly, they need their hippos to connect. If they don't, like their MK Ultra Endurance is not going to get through some of the bigger ice. I think also this is a good matchup into like Apocalypse. It's a good matchup into like St like Stargate. You have answers to things. I think it's for Criminal, it's probably a bit of a harder run uh, because if their money is all based off of, and this is a big thing to say, right? With Criminals, now that they're off of Pad Tap and Rizeki, a lot of their economy is more run based and interaction based. So if you can get up Mean Ice on Centrals or they can't run because they'll get thrown Ag Infusion into the remote server with the Nancy, like that is actually quite impactful. Yeah, you eat through both counters faster than Nancy. You definitely do. You definitely do. But I feel like the I don't know. I'm I'm really worried about any sort of hippo meta playing Ag Infusion. I'll say Ag Infusion is probably worth playing a couple of games against because you need to play entirely different against this than most of the other field. I think that's maybe good. Ag Infusion's four one nine matchup is quite sad. You really think so? I only think Ag Infusion reasonable if you think everyone's on Stargate. It's good against Diversion. I don't know. Like I don't feel like they can play uh, Amakua into this Ag Infusion matchup. Maybe at that point they get their Amina down and it's an issue. It's good. Yeah, it's good against APOC and getting, getting deep dive. If you're expecting like hard runs, um, this is something. Yeah, this is a big question mark for me. I don't know. I feel like I got burned a bit too many times playing around Hippo too hard. Nah. This is Hyobu. No. Uh, PE, yes. I think you're going to see some personal evolution. And I think, I don't know if we're I'd actually at a Caldera meta, <laughs> mind you. I do think Stone Shit Chart Room, if you're playing it, is huge. Stargate is really good into the matchup, and that's not a good position for the deck. Obviously, the deck still did well into a lat field, but if you're playing lat, you already have some really good tools. You have that clickless card draw, you have Stargate to not deal with traps, and you have Stone Ship. Just don't pop it until you're going to die. 
Uh, I think, again, we talked about no one home. That helps a lot. I don't know. There are some worlds where privately testing, people figure out there's a Jinteki deck that's just busted good, and then you need the Caldera sooner than not. I also think if you're going to worlds and you're trying to um, uh, like get a meta read from the Crown of Servers tournament, don't do that. Largely, people bring stuff to Crown of Servers, which isn't their winning as decks because they keep those in secret and testing. So I, I wouldn't make a call based off of that. But this is the sort of thing where like if you call it wrong in a lot of the fields on personal evolution and you're not teched for personal evolution, it's a bit difficult. But again, this is only top table, so whatever. Hyobu no, new alternate card subtitle. I don't know. I don't know what it take for this card to be good. Uh, you need a lot of ice or ways to do it clicklessly. Restoring humanity. There's a chance that this is good. I think there's a fair chance that this is okay. Whether it's better than Ag Infusion is the question. Um, what are you going to do with it? I think it's flexible enough. It's like the Panic Palana kind of version of things. I don't know whether it's Regenesis, but I think there's a chance that this is okay. Again, if criminals are all about interacting, you can like ice up your central servers. You want to do that. You have some economy. I don't know. The big question mark to me is whether we can transition into a mid-range score behind two ice with a defensive upgrade uh, plan and play a bit slower. I think I recently played into Restoring Humanity while testing uh, and they didn't make it to the video, but the player, I'm not sure who I played against, they just basically iced up everything. They did nothing for like the first 10 turns. Just ice, credit, credit, ice, credit, credit. Um, and then eventually they pushed a remote server. And at that point, like I could not make enough impactful runs because everything had way too expensive ice for me to deal with. If you're expecting a lot of Anarchs, again, barring and even Endurance is not that good into it, but like the heat breakers are awful into a lot of the, the, the Jinteki ice. So I think this or Ag Infusion are actually probably worth considering. Um, the question is whether that archetype works at all. I just do think that if so much of the money is based off of interaction, things like Into the Deep, things like Bravado, and things like, I don't know, people are playing, I guess, security testing. Uh, stuff like this is honestly like interesting. I just, this helps because the Chintake doesn't have an economy. What is the panic archetype? Izzy, panic is not exactly an archetype. Panic is a state of mind. Uh, the idea is that if you're going into a tournament and you don't know what the meta is or you don't know what to play, a lot of people fall back on what was classically called panic palana. Uh, we're going to, we should be able to find it. Currently, a lot of people say panic precision design, but the idea is that they play an archetype that they understand how it works. It's generally doesn't have any flashy tricks. It has good value, good economy. And then you just play that into every meta. If we see deckless panic, yeah, people use the word panic plan a lot. Can I post a panic plan on me? Yeah, for sure. It's PG? Yeah, totally. So like you see panic ag infusion and it's going to be like nothing spicy. Panic Padma, panic PD, uh, no plan is yet. Panic pal, look classic. So the idea here is like, it's nothing special. Well, actually this one's a bit special, but like good ice, good economy, defensive uh, upgrades. This is just the PD list for the last couple of years. Uh, yeah, Palana. Three Caprice, three Marcus Batty, good economy, good ice. Just nothing to it. And Polana was so good because you didn't have to build your deck around it. You just got free money. Um, okay, that's a weird looking link cat. Okay, it's not going to work. Yeah, yeah, that's not going to work. Apologies. Okay. Where were we? Anyways, I think there's a chance that there's something here. I wouldn't be surprised if there's something good here. Sarswati, man, there are some big Sarswati stands out there. I really don't like his identity. But huge shout outs to Josh Quinlan. Can we find Josh's deck? There was a deck at the top tables of 2018 World Championship Netrunner that just installed advanced advanced cards on the table uh, and basically made the game, is that a cerebral overrider or is it not? And I think that archetype is probably still better served in personal evolution for many reasons. People like Sarswati because it's efficient, but I I, I no. I, I think the value you get out of Sarswati economically for click compression, you really have to go out of your way to start playing things like a uh, vulnerability audit. Um, otherwise, you're probably better off playing anything else. What would be a reg crim now? Regular crim? Uh very easy. Regular crim right now, how I would define it. Okay, so you have your ability. I, I think your ability is worth building around in criminal right now. 419 is probably the most regular of all criminals. Then you need your breaker suite. So we're looking at Bugalter for sure. Uh, you're playing Bugalter for many reasons, so that's solved. Your fracture is whether you want to spend influence on or not. I think largely because you're playing so much run-based economy, you want to get the cheapest fracture possible, so you're playing a paperclip. Fantastic. Uh, and then when it comes to your decoder here, you got some options. Some of the lists are on um, uh, Amina, which is a bit expensive. I think this is expensive. Again, when you're playing 419, you can play tagged version or untagged version. You're more likely to play Amina if you're playing the tagged version because you can get this cheated out with um the name of the card I can't remember right now, but somebody knows what I'm talking about. Or otherwise you're playing uh the not very flashy one, uh Cat's Cradle. 
There's also a huge benefit in not committing for money for paperclip before it's needed. Oh yeah, there's so many reasons why why paperclip's like busted good. Okay. There's a lot of cats out there. Oh uh, yeah, and you have cat's cradle. In terms of your multi-access for basic criminal, you're largely just on the twinning. I don't think there's much else that makes sense. You could be on a single Stargate, but that doesn't make a lot of sense because you need your MU. Because your MU is now full up because you're playing Chesva. And if you're playing Chesva, then you're also playing the twinning. But you're ex expecting regular criminal to be on one twinning, maybe two, but probably one. That's regular criminal. On top of that, the big question is whether they're running Amaku or not. If they're playing 419, definitely, maybe even two. If they're not playing criminal, they might not play Amaku, and then they can go ahead and play Tapworm. I think that's your program suite. I think that's largely solved. Otherwise, it's everything you expect. Three Burrato, three Dirty Laundry, three Sure Gamble, maybe Blueberry Diesel. You're generally playing two copies of the Class Act, maybe three, and I play two or uh, two or one Miss Bones. Yeah, it's credit kiting. Thank you. Yeah, it's credit kiting for sure. Um, there's a big question whether Criminal needs to go out of the way to play cards like Rogue Trading and then clear the tag clicklessly, especially if you're playing 419 with Link, and uh, clicklessly clear the tag with things like um, uh, the Citadel Sanctuary. I think that's more important if you're playing into more Glacier where you have the time to spend your turn just setting up and getting credits because this has a lot of credits on a single card and a nonsense amount because otherwise it's all about Chesva and running a lot and getting value from that. Otherwise, I think you're on two Boomerang. I think that's where you want to be. Three Boomerang is a bit much, unless your deck is like really specifically hyper-aggressive for some reason. Uh, then in terms of your console, if you're not on Endurance, I think Penny Shaver is largely what you want, unless you're doing something more bespoke, like Deep Dive, you could consider Swift. Even then, Penny Shaver is still pretty good. Uh, from that point on, what are we missing? You can play all the tech cards you want. No one home, uh, no free lunch. Those are both good. Citadel, you're probably playing two Earthrise daily casts. Uh, otherwise, uh, other multi-axis, I think you can just do 20. Maybe you want to play one or two jailbreaks, but it, it's just good stuff. It's like right in the middle. It's, it's just good. <laughs> 20 is really good. Thank you. In Shaper, do you think it's better to import a killer or paperclip? Um, paperclip. It depends where you are. Oh, what is this? The process, the process of transition, John Fisher, 2012, 10 days to worlds. Can't wait to hang out with friends, but what corp deck should I play? All these decks sucks. Am I bad at Netrunner dead game? It's fine. Everyone will have bad corp decks. Oh shit. Worlds is tomorrow. Let's just play Polana. Yeah, this is basically it. This is how panic Polana works. Denial. I don't care how well I do at worlds. That's its own tangent. CTM is always good. Disillusionment. Technically not real. Oh, the depression sets in here. Rotation was a mistake. Fantastic. We've been there. Where's Geist? This is really funny, but this is exactly, this describes panic Polana pretty well. Emotional roller coaster, and then you take the least effort out which is still a pretty good effort thing i think career fair you could consider i don't think you want to run three career fair it's deep dive ryan not a thing in standard deep dive is very much a thing in standard but deep dive is a card that you inherently have to build around so i don't think i'd put deep dive exactly in my um in my 419 list maybe you could play one uh but i would definitely play in, in sable the question is whether you play one or two so why would you i don't know if criminal can apocalypse that easily this is another thing where people are going to figure out like criminal apocalypse is just good enough and then they can just like reinstall their amakuas but um yeah that's kind of the issue i do think deep dive is still pretty good uh another really cool thing is that like mad dash is also very playable with the twinning you're you're guessing but it, it's not the worst I, I think you could consider mad dashing randomly in, into it and i think the last thing for criminal that i would play is i'd play at least one pinhole threading it's a bit situational if you really think the meta call deserves two, you can do it. Um, and then I would play um, Expose. And if you're playing Mad Dash, you definitely play Expose. But playing Falsified, uh, generally, I think a lot of people aren't two because you don't always want in your opening hand. But you want to get there. I think that's what regular criminal is. The deck is actually pretty like the standard good stuff. Basic stuff is like kind of a known quantity and it's pretty good. It's still pretty good. The question comes down to like how many chess was you play? Some people are in three. I think you could be on two. Yeah, uh, but I, I think there, the, there's no big surprises here. In terms of what Midnight Sun brought for Criminal, uh, they're not playing Revolver because you need too much support for it, generally. Uh, and then you're playing the Twinning because Criminal lost the Turning Wheel for Rotation, and that's a perfect fit for it as well. Are people going to play Virtuoso? I don't know. I hope so to some extent. But uh, it's it, it turns out like the credits, obviously, from, from uh, Penny Shaver are just super, super valuable, especially if you're playing an asset matchup. Um, so the cost of playing Virtuoso is pretty high. I think if you're playing Virtuoso, you probably want to tune your deck a bit to it maybe play two twinnings because you need those extra accesses to be like really impactful yeah that's the way i see it at least all right we got through that uh acme nbn it's good we saw a lot of acme just the continentals i feel like these decks are the sort of decks that can go long but if they get apocalypse the whole game is over so kind of up in the air there and i think we saw some even faster acme decks i think the big thing is like right now is like nobody deals with data ward this whole this whole ID is held up by this one card. Nobody deals with data ward well. Nobody. Can you draw your data ward early? 
maybe. But I, I think Acme is also worth considering if you want to play NBN mid-range Glacier. Hippo does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need a Hippo this. If you're playing Anarch, like, you basically have your Hippos to be like, I need to hit the Data Ward. But even that, like, that's not bad for the for the corporation, but 100%. That's the only way you can deal with this is destroy it. And there's not many ways to destroy this easily. Even when you destroy it, right, it's, it's still rough. That's what the ID does. Acme means you have at least one X Data Ward in your hand 100% of the time. Ugh, you're a bit luckier than I am. IP block is always good. Acme is the same weakness as Ag Confusion, yes. I do think a lot of the ice in this faction are probably, no, actually, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. If you're like really scared of a hippo, it's a bit bad. But I think both decks have enough ice that are good enough into endurance. And uh, Acme and Ag Confusion can't play around hippo. That's the only problem. So you're making a call there how much hippo you expect to see. Because inherently Acme, just like Ag Confusion, you want your outermost to be res. So it's a problem. As Mari EdTech, I feel like this is probably fine. The question is whether they're playing all the six. I feel like some people might be a bit more scared to play just the, the six three pointers. More of these lat decks are running two mad dash. I feel like that's not going to help you. And merely there's it's still pretty good against like any of the, the score four or three with mad dash agendas. This is obviously like a good ability. The question is like, is mid range rush and NBN any good? So I think at that point you have to like transition to like bio vault or like real defensive upgrades. And there's nothing really good in faction that does that. So like you're playing Asmari mostly because your agenda suite can be pretty good and mostly because your ice is okay. But like, I don't feel like you have much else. Maybe you can put a hard hitting new shell in here. I feel like this is probably my take. That's the most incorrect. Game net. I just don't want to. I just don't want anyone to play game net ever. Maybe secretly. That's why it's good. Ah, I don't know. Uh, suit game is probably fine. No pad tab's good. As Mario with Drago is like R plus but better because you don't need the prison. Beating up the runaway SGP market force is a huge scoring window. I think that's a list. Like we did see some Asmaris at, at German Nationals that were like quite like that, right? I, I think I saw a game. I don't know who Bridgman was playing over, but like back in the day, they had Rizeki and like they just ran over this deck. And this deck, I think that version was also running like multiple border controls for the remote server. But like you saw. It got the credits up and it was playing the six agendas. It was like send a message Bologna. And uh, if you got the credits up and classically, it's going to be a bit harder to play kind of defensively into that without uh, Rizeki. Yeah, this probably can do something. The big question is like whether a tempo Drago is pretty impactful. And yeah, yeah, I, I could see it being a bit impactful. Uh, Self-growth program is, is quite mean. Uh, Reality Plus. I honestly don't know if the list is that good anymore. Obviously, archive memories seem to be a bit important. Um, this deck doesn't really do that much else. It's still pretty good. It has mean ice, like ice that still is difficult to interact with endurance. But to me, like it feels so much of these NBN decks are like super, super comparable. Like, right, like Reality Plus gets its money on the tag. Asmari gets the money because you have to play cards. Acme just has a bit better ice. I just don't feel like any of these are really pulling me into like a drastically different uh like build, which is awkward. I'll try to publish a list before World so everyone can be miserable playing against Drago all the time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's appreciated. NEH, um, probably not the best thing you can do for assets. NEH kind of gets like fuel the way that controlling the message gets control on the table. And I feel like if people are teched for this, if you're playing to freedoms and to miss bones, like I don't know what you want to do with this thing. 17 influence doesn't, I think, hit any combo breakpoints that I'm aware of. But again, people are testing in private and I haven't been grinding private testing. Uh, so I would be really surprised to see NEH. Uh, because I feel like controlling message might just do it better. It's a five influence swing there. Who knows? And then these are the sort of decks like where, especially NEH, you bring NEH and then you get Apocalypse. Go home. Oh, bad. It's going to be bad. And there's going to be Apocalypse at Worlds. New Angel Salt. Yep. Prop. I played against some prop decks that I think are quite good. I think some of the prop decks are really nice. They can do some really mean things. NAPD Cordon is good. I see people like triple advancing their Akit with the uh, priority construction. I think Masvingo is fine into an endurance meta. I kind of like the Prop Devos deck. Like really, this is the one that actually does something that I, or plays a different deck more than the difference between like Asmarian and like Reality Plus, if you ask me. I think it's less consistent. I think it requires uh, the opponents to misplay a bit. Because they have to like, you know, but the thing is like if more people are running and if more of the economy is not tied into like credit per turn economy cards, the ability of Prov the Boast is going to fire more frequently. I've been playing decks where I realized like I'm holding like a, you know, a hot pursuit, a dirty laundry and and uh, and a jailbreak. I'm like, well, I got to do one of these, I guess. Spark, I don't ever think Spark is going to do anything compared to any of the other controlling the message. Like one controlling the message trigger has more value than like four Spark triggers. Like it, the exchange rate doesn't make any sense. And sync is like, okay, but if you're expecting a lat meta where people are in misdirection, sync generally gets a fair bit worse. 
because the power of sync is sync is really strong if you have to clear one tag at a time or obviously if you have a lot of tags that's pretty mean but if you're expecting you know 25 percent of the field to be on the lat version apocalypse or not uh that deck has misdirection into it and misdirection eats sync alive whether you can play enough copies of um what's that two coster that trashes zeros there's a neutral card that can just trash a zero cost card or a card with cost equal to the amount of tags you have that fixes that uh but not fixes it they have simul chips best defense thank you yeah, yeah that's the one yeah this is something you can do but like i think it just prolongs the inevitable because that deck has two simul chips and you're not taxing out the simul chips you're not fast advancing so they they would have to misplay into it all right Wayland's interesting earth station haven't seen a lot of this um it is has three chrisiums which is kind of cute it has a remote server that's honestly taxing to run even with endurance i feel like this deck is always like you have to play it really clean and really well um because uh, an opponent can pull it back like when this deck goes behind it goes really far behind um where like you get the hq flip you trash a chrism then you're on the remote server like that gets pretty bad uh the agenda suite in this deck like i'm not actually sure what it is anymore like it's probably just the good stuff mid-range and then you're playing a deck that could go anywhere i don't know how big of a thing this is this deck also struggles to play like some of the nicer cards like spin doctor because you only have one remote server it's not a terrible ability but no one's been playing it uh and it's kind of fiddly hq pressure is also not as strong as it used to be so the ability to defend hq heavily is not as well like you rather ice R the amount that you want to ice hq is kind of the amount you want to ice rd over any central server sort of i guess with four nine it's a bit different um there was a jemison deck recently published jemison's fun I don't expect it to be very consistent. SSO also same thing. This thing just doesn't have the cards to support it anymore. And then op, I think is definitely worth playing ground. And it's so hard to figure out what you're playing into with op. There is like four or five different op archetypes. And on turn one, figuring out what you're playing ground. Like if you're playing against the Bridgman Hard Hitting News version, if you're playing against the Man of the Moon like weird, uh, strange bladder or prison one, if you're playing against it's the Pencils like value based defensive upgrades and trick one or anything in between, it gets really hard. And I think Op is like very flexible for that reason. Yeah, Cody's Rococo version, of course. Uh, and I think that's pretty interesting. I also like this deck. Again, I said this before. At Crown of Servers, I value this a lot because it is flexible and you can start tutoring things to to, to, to deal with the diverse meta there. And I, I think that's pretty fun. I'm locked into play Wayland for my team. I want to play Open Worlds, but I also want my brain not to melt in my nose. I don't think it's as bad as you think it might be, is he? Um, especially because in Op. Okay, actually, the fact that you said that makes me worry because whenever I play Op, I play on JNet and JNet tells me all my stuff. So I don't have to be like, oh, yeah when i have to like thumb through my deck like an absolute buffoon i think you're right maybe it's a bit harder than i think it is i should get some games in like physically for that one thing that's worth saying and while i said i i said that you can do note taking in my tips video it's also very important that you can't take notes in from a previous game into a next game so anytime that you uh start a net runner game and you're taking notes you have to like have a clean page that being said, you can always say that you've played some matchups and you're like, oh, remember in Jinteki they have Sting. Remember this, remember this. You are totally fine to when the game starts, immediately scrawl your game plan on a piece of paper and just refer to that if you need focus. But you can't like have a guide and bring that guide to the table. But like in op, if you want to know all your two costers, one costers, you can go ahead and write it down and start crossing them out as they come out of your deck. That actually might help you. You just can't come in with a sheet that already has the stuff typed out on it, unfortunately. Shuffle fast. Yeah, that's going to help too. Jemison lost Old Hollywood Grid, the funniest card to include in it. Wait, why? Why does Old Hollywood Grid matter? Are you running that strange of an agenda suite? Yeah, I think Op has some big legs because I think Op is also one of the decks that's most likely to be unsolved. Because even you saw like the difference between Op decks three weeks apart until Continentals, uh, it was a different deck. So that's pretty wild. Can you bring your own deck list and cross off? Uh, I don't think you can. It's strange. I don't think you can. I think all you're allowed to bring is a paper and pencil, but it's kind of surprising that you can't. The thing is like, it's also kind of hard, not in the easiest thing to take to your table because if your opponent sees it, you're at a big disadvantage. And a lot of times your paper is just going to be sitting to the side of you. It's like, I don't think you can like shield it. Yeah, but that's the thing. You can't bring outside notes. So I don't think you can, but like you could scroll it down really quickly if you needed to. It's just kind of ugly. Outfit, um, outfit, what is it doing right now? Hard hitting news and to boom is like not amazing right now. Mind you, the op list is working, but if people are on stone ship and I think people are going to tech for tags, like a single no free lunch helps you a fair bit. Uh, so I don't know. This does have me nice and me nice early. A lot of that ice is two subroutines barring the bulwark, which has 
I think two meaningful subroutines, one meaningful subroutines. <laughs> Judge what are my two, two costers? You can fail this to, to sort too. Like you, you look at Ob and you can look at your deck and be like, oh, I decline, but you've used your op ability. I think it's going to happen. I once ran a Jemison, uh, old type of grid, and one of a bunch of different agendas which can ramp into Jemison's ability. Man, you like inconsistency on top of inconsistency. I, I support you, Steven. I played old Hollywood grid decks all the time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this does anything that much better. Uh, there's a chance that this gets a bit better because it's one of the faster decks. And that's the thing, though, is like I feel like the runners are going to be a bit more explosive in terms of economy. Like you're seeing more runners on runner economy. That's again, I, mean, I don't know how much you're going to see of like the slow Proco, the slower pawn shop. You're going to see pawn shop. But I like. If they're not on Rizeki, they're probably playing something that's less inevitable, but a bit faster. So rushing people out with like too big to fail into hard hitting news. I don't know that, how easily that's going to work. Builder of Nations, I wouldn't really consider this. Uh, we should not dismiss things. What does Builder of Nations do? It has a 40 deck size. It doesn't have Kakugo, but that saves a 9 influence, so that's kind of nice. It grinds runners. Can you put things in a remote server over and over again where that's a problem? I feel like you will lose sooner to Stargate and Double Mad Dash than the amount of grind you can get from this. Yeah, probably not. Uh, build a better world? No, thank you. And then build to last. Uh, honestly, I haven't seen enough of this. And I think build to last is probably a faster and more consistent deck in some ways than the outfit. Your, your ice suite is a bit different. Uh, that's for sure. You're not running the bad pub stuff. You're running just like mid range and the run. The thing is, though, like even these like mid range rushy decks, I feel like op can just sometimes do better. The fact that like my asset, I can like trash something, board control, get better ice. Like that's a better rush ability a lot of times than just like getting two credits every once in a while. It made runners want to play buffer drive once. Now it doesn't do much. I don't even I wouldn't even go that far, but uh yeah, you can play it. I think that's mostly it. I I'm like this is a thing that happens though, where like you can meta call against the Swiss rounds and it while well, your opponents will be playing these known archetypes. And a lot of people also like net deck for worlds, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like if I'm going into worlds, this is a deck that I've played a couple games with. It's built by someone who's like, you know, a uh, reclaimed or acclaimed uh builder, and then you just take it from there. Uh, so you'll see the stuff. I am just really interested to see whether the private testing that's going on right now, whether people are coming up with entire archetypes that people aren't even teched for. Let's do runner real quick. It's 1120. Uh, maybe we get one game in. We'll see. Standard. Okay, runners will be faster. I'm going to start at the bottom because whatever. Uh, mini faction, Sunny. I think the mini factions got so much worse. So much worse by losing Patep and Rizeki that I wouldn't really consider it. Considering Sunny and her security nexus over anybody in endurance is kind of a joke at this point. So I don't see why we do it. Uh, the Atom list could be like the ones that are not running Endurance and are running Brain Chip. And they're fine. I just feel like losing. The, oh, they lost so many good economy cards in the list. I don't know. I, you'd be hard pressed to figure a reason why this could be better than anything else. Like the question is like always looking at a faction. It's not so much what they lost, but what did they do that any other faction can't do that makes them more well positioned into, into meta? Adam has like massive information. Ma uh, Adam has massive access to the top of R&D by seeing it. Adam has Logic Bomb, which is pretty good. Not so much good into Border Control. Border Control is more popular than it's been in a while. Uh, and that's kind of it. Minus hand size is not great. When people are playing Bladder Ward, people are trying to boom you. You do with, yeah, of course, with Emergent Creativity, you can get your one of Endurance faster if you're only playing one. You can also get like Misdirection and stuff like that. But it just, just sounds like you're describing a Shaper deck, right? So I don't know. Apex, no. Tao. Uh, Tao's ability, we haven't seen a lot of it. I, I don't think this is a particularly splash, flashy ability. You see people are actually a bit more careful of what they're icing. You're seeing into some of the endurance uh, matchups, especially if you have to go faster, which might change with Rizeki. People aren't like icing up archives once. Okay, no, that's not true. There's two things that people are doing. Some decks are just icing twice on the remote server, twice on R&D, and that's it. And then you can run and get endurance counters. Other decks are icing up every single server once, so it's harder to get endurance counters. It depends on what your deck can do. If they're icing up every single server once and you have endurance, that actually is something that Tao can capitalize on where you take the thing they put on archives that's just good enough and put on the remote server. That's okay. The question is whether that's better than any of the other shapers. Currently, the shapers have kind of weak abilities classically. Uh, apparently, we're seeing a lot of that. So I don't know. I don't know. In absent matchups, this is not a very strong ability if you're expecting not that much ice. I think Kit is better than uh, they've ever been in a long time. Not too sure what you can do with this though. 10 movements is an issue. You're not packing clot. You're not generally packing the toolbox that shapers succeed with, uh, but you're really good at breaking ice. And currently that doesn't seem like the most important thing you have to do. Like if you're playing kit, you still need to deal with like two Parisha. Like you still have to wait to, to, to win against controlling the message. And that's just a nightmare matchup. Oh, uh, that's good. You're going to see a Lat. 
like, okay, y'all, what do you do? If you're sitting across a lat and you're like, you know, top tables and you're trying to figure out if it's just like, you know, value Stargate lat or if it's an APOC lat, does that change how you play? And how do you hedge against each of those so you're not blown out by the other one? Like, I don't know. That's a hard question. And I feel like there's a lot of people that are going to just play that every version is an APOC one because I think the punish on that's a bit harder. But that's a question I need to put more thought into because you're going to see that so often on stream where we're trying to figure out what lat list we're looking at. If you want to see what APOC lap is, you can find a lot of lists on NetRuneDB. There's versions that are posted. Um, I think there's a Snare Bears version that's posted um, past the new um, update. I actually want to check what that looks like. Yeah, SBL, this is not Snare Bears, but this is a low pair played at event. And in short, what's changed? Uh, we're running the two SMC now, so we have a better uh, access to our clot if we need to. Uh, we're running Telework Contract 3 of. This is also just a good enough card uh, into uh, APOC. I'm not actually sure. I'm more familiar with the non-APOC version. But that version, was it playing Pat Tap? I don't think it was. What do you have tech in your deck if you have Chrysium? Yeah, if you have Chrysium and Border Control, that stuff matters. But like having Border Control on the remote server is a real good thing to do against Lat anyways to score out. I guess now you have to put on Centrals. That's where it gets really awkward. I'm not, the pinhole threading, that's definitely new to the list. And this list is on two man dash, which I think is interesting. But it's not that far different. I, I don't actually think the APOC version was on Rizeki. Maybe someone can correct me. The, the one that we saw Continentals. Okay. Apocalab was on Rezeki and Patap. Wow, so where does the influence go? Like, what were the um the cuts? Like, what was... Because some of those had only one APOC, right? But having two seemed to be more correct because you wanted to APOC, like, more than once and more consistently. So I think that's where some of the influence went. Maybe that's all of the Patap influence. I remember you saying something along those lines. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Julian. That helps. So this is the older version. Oh, it was on two APOC. Oh man, that is that is an image. Uh, so it looks like the difference was no Stargate. And the pad taps came from somewhere else. There's also single deuces in here. So we have, um, instead of a deuces, it looks like we have the uh, the pinhole. Hold on, my they're too spread out. And then we have clot Stargate. So this version didn't have Stargate. And I think that's it. Yeah, okay, cool. If HQ isn't threatened much, you can probably get by with double icing RD and saving ice to do again after APOC. Yeah, it, that, that's the only issue though. Is like if HQ is open, this deck is now running like three dirty laundries and like it has an endurance. So just getting free endurance counters is kind of a problem. So yeah, it's it's hard. It's hard. I'm not actually sure what the best strategy is to ice up against Lat. And I don't pe think people want to uh tell to, to let people know. Uh, Cabanessa, I think there's probably some pretty good Cabanessa decks. I wouldn't expect Apocalypse in those sort of lists, but this is the sort of list like one of the big strengths classically Cabanessa is that she could set up the triple Rizeki early and that's not no longer a thing that's been banned out. So what is the strength of Cabanessa? What are you setting up early game? I don't know, but this is the sort of engine like Reaver was one of the big ones so that you can like very consistently set up your, um, your, uh, Aesop's pawn shop engine. I think that's interesting. I think you saw that the Greg tongue had a deck list of the week, um, a couple, uh, now probably a month and a bit ago. And I think that's probably looking at Reaver shop is good because Reaver and NFL is just nuts. Oh yeah. Yeah. The idea is that you can crack no free lunch or also stone ship chart room on your opponent's turn to gain three credits or clear a tag, and then you get the reaver draw. That's obviously pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, also, these cards are like fine uh, with um, technically, in theory, with Ace of Pawn Shop if you need to in a pinch. I feel like Shaper is just like obviously one Haley away from being really exciting to run all the no free lunch and all of the, um, the what's it called? Uh, the uh, stone ship chart rooms, just because that's an absurd amount of value on top of it. Haley with NFL and stone ship seems like a fun install. Yeah, it seems really, really fun. So I think that's something you might see. And I think these lists are still on endurance. Smoke, I think, is fascinating. I think Snoke is one of the few shapers that was still quite competitive, but did not suffer much from the changes to the ban list. A lot of smoke lists weren't on Rizeki. They were on, uh, of course, the twinning, which is very popular. Oh, talk about this. Again, I don't know how much twinning you're going to see, but like you can scape net if you really needed to. I feel like ScapeNet in this, not that I'm saying you should play this, but I feel like this is one of the metas where ScapeNet is more likely than anything to connect. And before this, mind you, we were in a turning wheel meta and people still didn't play ScapeNet, and I don't think that's wrong. Um, but uh, yeah, this is interesting if you expect to see a lot of the 20, which for me right now is only criminal and uh, probably uh, smoke. Is smoke on boat now? I don't think so. She could be. I just don't think she needs to. Like, smoke already exceeds, excels at like breaking ice cheaply. 
Uh, what console smoke playing? I think we saw Onicom in some of the versions we saw at uh, at Continentals. NFL with guys and tech trader seems great. Yeah, it's just a better version of Fall Guy, right? I was having a lot of trouble making smoke boat twinning work well in our GNK. Yeah, that might be one bridge too far, right? Like smoke is pretty happy just to play Onicom to get that card draw, which is something that she doesn't inherently have. Nemekirk can draw cards, but a lot of times you need that other stuff. Are there any videos from Continentals? I couldn't find any sauce. Unfortunately, there aren't. Uh, the VODs from Continentals on the, the Null Signal, classically the, the Nisei uh, Twitch channel, uh, they expire after a month. But Null Signal has said that they will upload them on their YouTube channel. It just takes a while. I have no doubt Null Signal has other stuff they're worrying about now with Worlds next week, but they need to download everything and then re-upload them. And it's like literally dozens of hours of footage and that it's long and hard to do. But they will be up there for sure. Just like with the Worlds VOD will eventually be up on the YouTube channel a month after Worlds or whatever. Yeah, sometime after Worlds. They'll be up there for sure. It just takes a bit. They said they're going to do it. Uh, yeah, I, I think Smoke is actually quite interesting. Um, I don't think Smoke inherently has the best matchup into some of the stuff we've talked about. Like the Acid Smoke matchup, not great. You can tech into it a bit. You can use your Nemecur credits to trash things. The, this is a run-based econ deck too, but it's also one of the run-based run -based econ decks that if they're playing into a slower meta, they actually get good re results later when they're you know uh, breaking stuff for really, really cheap. I feel like any stealth deck has way too much to install to play Endurance. Yeah, yeah, they have a lot of things and a lot of sequential installs. They're not just like install Endurance Go because they're like, I need to find this and I need to find this breaker. I need to find this other breaker. But yeah, uh, we have Padma and we saw a bit of Padma and I think Padma might low key be better than Lat in some world. Uh, the free card draw from Lat is like, you know, kind of the Earthrise Hotel you can get off Padma. Uh, whether you can see Padma lists that are a bit more focused, I think at this point getting on Endurance and only Amakua like we saw is a bit harder. I do think you're going to see a bit more Mavirus than you saw before. Uh, this is tricky. In terms of the charge targets, I don't think there's anything we've seen that have been like surprisingly unfair. I don't think Kasi String is going to be it, whether or not we want it to be, but... Uh, uh yeah it, it's definitely a very comparable identity i think this has been said before like in terms of the top performing shaper like lat's ability is like very easy to undervalue but it's like probably one of the least powerful like run abilities or uh, id abilities that have been this dominant free card though you can't laugh at that gotta go to bed but i saw oslo playing around with chezza twinning zaya and i want to give it a try i think that's that's exactly what you can see out of every criminal and i think zaya yeah you're right we'll get to that but zaya with the twinning is, is a really good way to make fast good value yeah. Isla, uh, not really. No, Isla doesn't really inherently do anything better than anybody else. It just gives you a bit more consistency on the mulligan. And while Andromeda was really powerful because it lets you set up very quickly, uh, Isla is just way less tempo than that. And inherently out of any faction, like Shaper is the best at finding uniques from their deck. Uh, so like you're playing three endurance, you already have some modifying code into the depths. Like Isla's ability, just doesn't make any sense. You're blocking the text box. That's a good call. Wait, how, how is this not happening on the corpse side? Did I just make myself too big? We didn't have this issue. Okay, we'll do that much. Thank you, Izzy. Uh, yeah, Padma's ability, not important. Isla's ability, not important. Uh, I, I can't see this being irrelevant. And then we have Akiko, and Akiko's just kind of been undervalued. Okay, I'm just going to move my face. There's no reason we have to see all the text of the runners. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, I don't think we're going to expect to see a Kiko. A Kiko is generally a bit underperforming, less influence. And if you want an R&D threat, I feel like more often than not, you could just play Padma and probably do a bit more consistent. Criminal is interesting. We talked a bit earlier about what, like, what regular good stuff Criminal looks like, and I feel like that shell is actually quite strong. The difference here, though, is like they don't have a lot of late game economy. Whether you want to play Rogue Trading and Friends, that's a thing. And the choice of which Criminal you want to play, I think, is actually a bit more impactful than it quite look can look. Specifically, we're sitting across the table from Zaya. I'm not sure whether you can play tag me in the modern meta. I have some experience playing it over the last couple of weeks. And while I do think the boom decks are beatable, the market forces are just kind of a wipe. Uh, and that's kind of a problem. So I wouldn't be, I don't think a lot of players are going to be brave enough to play, play that into the standard uh, world championship where you're going to expect some amount of market forces. But that means I, you can do a lot. I think, yeah, with the twinning is really impactful. Uh, it's really interesting that you get multi-axis consistently every turn to get you paid two credits a turn, three credits a turn. That's really quite good. And I don't think this deck has to do anything that absurd. Uh, you're just going to play all the good stuff. You're going to play the twinning. You're going to play two copies of Chezva, whether you're on Amaku or not, whether you're on Tapworm or not. That's interesting. You have access to Exposed. You have some Bypass if you wanted to, and you have some consistency with your draw. Of course, you're on three Diversion of Funds. I didn't mention that before, but that's important. 
I think Steve could only tune himself to be slightly different if you really wanted to. There's a chance that you could consider playing Onicom. Again, whether any of these are playing Endurance, that's actually kind of interesting. The big issue though with these decks is whether you're playing Endurance is a five influence card. Same thing if you're looking at Deep Dive, which we'll talk about in Sable, that's a five influence card. If you're playing a Singleton Endurance in your list, I don't think that makes a lot of sense. So you generally have to play two Endurances, that's 10 influence. Then if you're playing the Twinning, that's 13 influence, which is actually very important because then you cannot play Paperclip. And a lot of these decks want to be aggressive and run cheaply and quickly. And paperclip means you're also safe to a bit more program destruction, something that criminals are weak to. Uh, and so I feel like that's like a really cool result of the influence system. So if you're playing two endurance, you can't really play paperclip and, and uh, the other thing and uh, and the 20. So that's going to be interesting. I don't think criminal needs to play endurance. I feel like they have enough good ways with Chesva and the best breakers uh, to be able to run cheaply. I think that's interesting. I think for Steve, you could play Onicom and you want to play probably more events. I think also Steve is like, while you're not going to be running HQ maybe that easily all the time, they'll see you coming from a mile away, is that Steve does have that more late game uh, economy that some of the criminals lack now without not having Rizeki or Patap, right? The idea is that you can bring back some of your events and play them over and over again, actually injects a lot of economy to the Steve list. Sable's interesting. You're going to see Deep Dive Sable, Apoc Sable. I don't know. I'm not brave enough to make that call. I think you're going to see either single Deep Dive Sables or double Deep Dive Sables. But then the double Deep Dive Sables, again, have to make some pretty big, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, compromises. Because they can't play the twinning that easily. And then if they're playing the twinning, they can't play Paperclip. So that's going to be quite hard. I've been experimenting with Maw and Krim. And it's been a nice way to disrupt some combos out there. Very luck dependent, though. Yeah, Maw is just about always okay. It's just really hard right now to put it down a six cost card that you're spending, I think, three influence on. Uh, considering like the criminal consoles are just really good. But you're totally right. It does give um, disruption to criminals. Speaking about uh, disruption, uh, I think you could consider Embezzle as a card in criminal. There are a lot of NBN decks that are just hoarding their operations, their punishments in hand. If you saw like the controlling the message deck, and I think this lines up actually pretty well. I think you consider uh, playing Embezzle. Sorry, I'm covering the text a bit. That'll help. Yeah, it's not the worst card in the meta. But yeah, you do lack disruption, and so the matchups into things like Sports Metal that you're not very good at interacting with, because all you have is credit denial, and some of those decks can do really low credits. You're good at assets, and you have some really good breakers. And I, I think that's nothing to scoff at. Los, no. It's almost never Los. Khan, definitely not. Ken, probably not. I know there's big Ken fans, but I feel like the value you get from Ken is like quite comparable to just about every other vanilla criminal. As, yeah... I don't know. People aren't playing this. I'm playing as I think as is really fun and flexible and cool. Is it more work to get the same or slightly better results? Yeah, probably. And I think that's not going to help it. But I do think as has the as engine is unlike anything else, especially with Chesva, that it can be very, very good. But it is probably not the straightest line to results. And so a lot of people will avoid it for that reason. It's a very crooked and exciting line to results. And then, of course, the 419 in the room, 419. <laughs> Sorry, middle tables. Uh, 4.9 is good. The economy on this is important. The link on this is important. The ability is really good. It means you're probably playing Amakua. Is this a bit overrated compared to some of the other identities in Criminal? There's a chance that this is not the best generic vanilla Criminal. There is a chance. And I'm interested to see whether that proves out to be true or not. Thank, thank God no one associated with this channel has ever thought of or built a con list lately. Yeah, what a waste of time that would be. I feel like 419 is like really scary. <laughs> I think it is scary. I think that ability is really strong against like personal evolution. That's going to hurt those decks. I think it's strong against most of the acid matchups where like Amaku is already good in that matchup. So it's more like exposed to prevent information matters a fair bit. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. This is the same sort of thing. If it's if this is just vanilla criminal that's relying on Amakua, it's actually not that hard to play or tech around that. Um, mind you, you're going to eat a diversion or two on the way. And I think Anarchs, there's a a fair bit of inconsistency between the power level of things. I don't think Lou really has that big of a reason. I think Lou is so inherently comparable to Hoshiko that uh, I, I don't really know which one I'd rather play over the other one. Like, it's just basically the same ability, but Hoshiko is a bit more easy to fire, so I don't think we'd ever really competitively consider Lou, unless the 40-card deck size really, really mattered. Reyna, no. Quetzal, uh, no, there's not really anything in the meta that Quetzal is addressing. You could see Quetzal show up on a DJ Fenris. Tag me Lou on Imp to trash the market forces. I feel like still though, at that point, you could just play freedom and or not even freedom. Yeah, not that you need to do tag me, but it's a cool thing that you say though, because like actually tash, trashing the market forces is really impactful, but it's a, like a what? A one cost card? You could get it with freedom. You can get it with uh, Hoshiko Imp. I think Omar is interesting. 
409 brings even more value to the pinhole threading Chenzo plays as well. Yeah, it, totally. And also Miss Bones, mind you, works really well with um with uh the twinning too. Uh so there's like a lot of reasons where uh uh the twinning is getting criminal. I think there's this consideration you could see Omer, and that's probably in a very narrow, just apocalypse faced meta. 12 influence is, is a bummer. And I think Alice falls into the same camp. We did see like a very interesting Alice with some counter surveillance in it at uh, Continentals, I think at APAC. And these sort of abilities I find very similar. Having that like immediately archived pressure is is relevant. It's kind of cool. It spreads the corporation thin. The problem for me is the like out of any matchup of like, oh, I'm going to ice up archives and a R and D. Like if I'm playing against Hoshiko, like you want to ice up a central for sure. So she doesn't get great early value. But like you see that archives run, you protect that archives run more than any other server. So that's better the way I see it to slow down the remote server push. But like it actually in some matchups could be harder to apocalypse when they see an Alice or Omar and ice up archives as well as central servers. They at least do archives first. I don't know. This is nine of your influence. You got three influence to play with. Figure out what to do with it. No, no, it's not a relevant ability getting the ice down to strength does not matter that much in the meta you can play ice carver if it does not too much p for this to be good it's not a very strong ability anyways the fact is there's only one credit like this is the thing that's absolutely buck wild to me is that so many of the abilities and currently in the anarch side i think it's the worst example of it so many of the identity abilities are about getting one credit of value a turn and then you see things like Lou, which is a credit in a card. And you see things like Hoshiko, which is largely a credit in a card. Sometimes it's many of a credit, but it's still pretty good. Uh, but then you look at Nat. It has to have a huge penalty associated to just gain a credit to turn. Now, mind you, with the Companions still around, and that's actually worth noting, the Companions in Anarch with, with Keiko is one of the only, uh, like, reliable infinite economy engines now that like Rizeki and, and, and friends are gone. So that's actually worth looking at to some extent. Of course, it's not like you wouldn't, uh, but yeah, eh, I don't know. Power creep. Yeah, kind of. I wouldn't exactly call it marked power creep, power creep. Well, it's power creep, but power creep doesn't matter when the thing it's creeping away from. Yeah, it wasn't really, you know, the standard bar of power. Have a really fun Anacom list, by the way. Oh, no list. Oh, no with Anacom. Weird. No technically got better with steel skin scarring, but still not good enough. Hoshiko, good. It's the vanilla Anarch. This is the most vanilla an Anarch can be, and it's just an immense amount of value throughout the game. You want to run, you want to check stuff, you can do whatever you want in this list. APOC, not APOC, Endurance, Botulist, Boomerang, or Hippo, I meant to say. All that stuff is really good. You're definitely going to see some amount of Hoshiko. And then you have Freedom, and I think Freedom is like low-key pretty good at the meta right now. There's a lot of decks that are known quantities that Freedom is good into. The one thing that I don't know is how good that Freedom is into like Heavy Glacier or like mid-range Rush Glacier. I think some of these lists classically were running N'Golo and also had access to Plongi if they wanted to. And maybe more of those versions right now are on Endurance, which kind of takes the, the, the role of um, some of these uh, the cards, the flexible like heavy influence spends to deal with ice. So I, I think Freedom could perform well. And then we finally have Essa. I don't really like Essa's ability that much. Uh, the question is not so much Essa's ability on its own, on, on her own ability. It doesn't do enough to close the game. It is disruptive and it's annoying. I do think you can play some of the best sabotage cards outside of Essa. Like just Tushka's okay. But I feel like modernly the way that I'm playing is like you'd rather have targeted destruction, like hitting an imp running HQ sometimes is better than just Tushka'ing because it's more about trashing the card in hand or stealing the agenda than it is three random cards off the top of the deck. So. Yeah, I don't know. And then we talked a bit about Alice. That's the runner side. If you ask me which faction is going to win Worlds, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. And I think I might look silly once you see a meta. It's like, oh, it's 70% this. But like, I do think there's a good reason to consider every single faction, barring the mini factions, in this Worlds. I think the criminals have a lot of access to stuff. I think the twinning is underrepresented and underexplored on the competitive fields over the last month. I think the twinning is just a nonsense good card. I think Anarchs have access to some really good stuff. Again, Endurance, they are playing, but they have access to Hippo, which seems pretty important going forward. And they have, you know, good Anarch engines. Essa with Running Hot and Rogue Trading is great, but you can't play Tag Me Essa in the current meta. Yeah, that's what I've been playing. I, I tried Tag Me Essa, and I don't even think Tag Me Essa is like the best version. Because I, I what I found from my testing is like taking on any amount of core damage means it's harder for you to get Obelisk to 7 and survive Boom. So that was really difficult. Again, I think I could play a list with God of War and maybe get up there faster. But running hot is like by far the best thing Essa can do. Running hot is monstrous. And then Shaper's just good. Shaper's still pretty good. And I think there's some Shaper abilities here that like Smoke, I think, could see good play. I think we're going to see a fair bit of Latin for sure. And then there's some things like uh, Cabinets or Padma uh, that could show up and have a deck that's slightly different, slightly off meta, but still very powerful.
Let's play asset with Keiko. It's, it's it's a nutty amount of money. Yeah, it could be, but like I don't know. I feel like if I want to play like the the standard good stuff, I'd probably just play Hoshiko. I don't know. I don't know how much Sabotage Two is worth. It's hard to say. I want to play more games with Esso where I play with somebody and I can look at the replay to see the kind of damage that Sabotage does. Because that's the sort of thing is like from my testing, it's hard to tell how impactful Sabotage is. And again, I've been playing against too many players who just like Sabotage two off the top of R&D, which is most of the time wrong. There's no way that you're holding five cards in hand and you can't discard at least one of them, if not two of them, especially when I'm not threatening like a run on HQ. So like, I don't know, a lot of my opponents just say top of R&D and like that's wrong. And that's hel not helping me evaluate uh, the power of, of the Sabotage. Okay, that's all of them. That's my comprehensive list. Thanks for tuning into my TED talk. Did I miss anything? It's 11:45. I I don't think we have time to play play games. Uh, we have to get to bed at some point. But that's it. Again, there's no stream next week. I don't even know if there's gonna be a video out next week. Unfortunately, I still have a lot of stuff to do. And again, I'm gonna be gone all next weekend, so it gets a bit harder. Mini faction. Uh, yeah, none of them. I think we talked about it a bit, but none of them. Apex, no. Heavens, no. Adam uh, got a lot worse. Adam got so much worse and the things that Adam can do, Adam's strengths are basically Shaper strengths. So you might as well play Shaper. And then Sunny uh, was even further behind than Adam. That's the way I see it. It just, you can't lose Pat Dev and Rizeki and still have a coach in the economy. And then even if you do that, again, you just find yourself, oh wait, my Adam deck is playing all the Shaper cards. I could just play Shaper and Shaper could import the directive. Yeah, I don't know. Directives are good. Directives are good, but again, also, if there's that much tagging stuff, you need to also start playing protection for resources, and uh, you're a bit further away than you used to be. Okay, that's it. I, again, I don't know if there's going to be a video next week. I'd hope there would to be, but there's a chance this, this channel is going to be silent, which it hasn't been for a while. We've been trying to put two or three videos out a week, so apologies for that, but we have worlds. So again, Twitch. Oh, I closed all my tabs. I should never do that. Slash TV. Null signal netrunner. Links in description. Go ahead and hit the follow button, hit the subscribe button there. The notification button is the important one because it'll also tell you if you hit that bell. When they go live, you will get a message uh, on your phone. You get a push notification if you have uh, Twitch on your phone. And so then you'll know when they're live. And so then you can go tune in. And again, they're going to be trying to stream everything. So the Crown Servers Team Tournament should be streamed on Friday. On top of that, Saturday Standard. Uh, finals for of Standard is on Sunday. And after that, they should be streaming the finals of Startup. So you're going to see a lot of high stakes Netrunner. Can you upload a little short in the hotel of you saying I'm at Worlds? I kind of wanted to do that. Like I kind of wanted to go around with my phone and film some stuff. Unfortunately, my phone is a bit old and the battery is not very good. I don't know what filming is looking at it. I might do some like basic vlog stuff, but there's no way that I'm going to upload it there because as you know, uh, we're in Canada and data in, in Canada for, for cellular is some of the worst in the world in terms of pricing. I have two gigs and it's like 50 bucks a month. You know how easy to go through two gigs of data? You can accidentally do it. My phone bill, I got turned off last month because we traveled to Ontario. And then if you go $50 off your bill, they have to say like, we're shutting down your phone. If you want to get more, Canada has made protections that if you get $50 over your bill, they have to shut off your phone. And you have to be like, I consent to spending more money. Telecommunication prices in Canada are like some of the worst in the world. It's probably not the worst problem to have, but uh, there could be worse, I guess. Korea is unlimited for $40. Yeah, it, it's a lot of the world. That's like a lot cheaper than that. So it is it is what it is. I mean, maybe just like a pre-recorded something that's like no regular upload because of worlds. Yeah, maybe that's worth doing. I don't know. I, I would like to put out just like a little video that just says like, here's two games. Also, I'm at worlds. Maybe I'll just do that. But I just don't know if I have the time to do like a full deck dive, which unfortunately, yeah, I like to do those. Canada, we're more civilized than our neighbor to the south, also Canada. Yeah, Canada has like, Canada's a fantastic place to live. I'm not gonna talk shit about Canada, but like there's some weird things that Canada's like far behind on. One And like telecommunication prices, if that's the biggest problem I have, okay, whatever. I'm on Wi-Fi. I'm mostly at home. Anywho, on that note, for all of you that I, uh, oh, actually, this is like the most important note. A lot of y'all might be at Worlds. I'm gonna be at Worlds. I'll look slightly different because I have a mask on. Maybe you can recognize me. Maybe you can't. Come say hi. Please do come say hi. This is like so important to know. I am not a very outgoing person. Socially, I'm actually quite shy. I'm pretty reserved. I'm not the per kind of person to walk into a room and introduce myself and start like meeting people. No, I will basically hold over to my own side. I'm not aloof. 
I'm friendly. I'm just like not an outgoing person. That might be a surprise. I like public speaking, so I'm comfortable here. And obviously hanging out with all y'all is like an absolute treat. But do please come up and say hi. You're not bothering me unless obviously I'm in the middle of casting. Don't do that. Uh, but yeah, don't be a stranger because I'm not in e I'm going to obviously make an effort, but I'm not the best person to go out the way to like say hi to people. I get awkward too. Maybe we both get awkward together. It'll be a fine. Team Data is one of the few things I miss about living in the States is basically that ironically Mexican food. Yeah, Mexican food around here is not a thing. Thank you for everything you do. Andy, hey, cheers. Thanks for saying Thanks for the kind words. Granted, not many things to miss about the States. Are you gunslinging or is it only SG folk? It's only SG folk. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gunslinging. Find Patrick Sklar and gunsling the shit out of him. I don't actually know if he's on the gunslinging list because he's not actually volunteering, I don't think, at Worlds. But like, find Pat and ruin him. You need to carry around a big Metro Ball grid flag so we can track you down. Yeah, I don't actually know what to do. Like, I have a Metro. Oh, yeah. Oh, small thing. I made some Metro Ball grid t-shirts, and this is almost not worth saying. I had to do a small run of t-shirts, and a lot of people in my meta were like, oh, I want one. I want one. And so they have it. And it's just like a red t-shirt like this, and it says Metro Ball grid really small on the lapel. Or not the lapel, on, on the heart. Because that's the kind of stuff I like. I don't like wearing big branding. Some uh, One of my friends was joking. He's like, man, if I'm going to chill out, like make it huge. I'm chilling out huge. Uh, I have like maybe six t-shirts left over of various sizes uh, that aren't claimed. Uh, if you want a t-shirt, I might have one that I can... I have to sell them because I spent a lot of money on t-shirts. I just need to make the price back. I'm not trying to make money off these. Um, but if you want them again, I only have very few. They're going to go very fast if that's something you want and in limited sizes. And it's a men's shirt, which is a unisex shirt. But uh, yeah, that that's all I got, unfortunately, because I could not put a bigger order in. If Pat beats you, you are Sklar struck. Oh, no, don't tell him that. Uh, but yeah, anyways, there's some shirts. That's it. Uh, cool. I'll be around. I'll see you at Worlds. Come say hi. I'll try and come say hi, too. And uh, that's it. We'll be back on this channel in like two weeks. Probably Pat will be there and we'll just like recap worlds and be great. Your house buyer guy got me into the game and blew my mind. People check out those old guides if you haven't. Oh, thank you, Andy. Yeah, those are uh, those turned out really good. I need to do those for Midnight Sun as well. Later on. Yo, Cody, we'll see you in a bit. Everyone else, safe travels. If you're going, if you're not going, that's fine. Watch the stream. Still a lot of like fun to have remotely. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it. We'll see you all in a bit. Ciao, ciao, ciao.